Open fire! When two cultures collide, which yeah. one will stand yeah. to liberate the black community? Zero. First of all, I need to acknowledge Side why this TV. debate is necessary. Black News 102. Whose words will survive when we purge the lies? That curse the divine, cast the pearls to swine. Reverse the design, even merge divide. Side net a TV with two worlds collide. Might hurt to decide just who verbs will vibe. When we curve all the job, whether girls or guys. No herbs left alive in this earthly skies. Side at a TV with two worlds collide. Clash of the titans. Facts will enlighten. Some spitting mad, but they ain't happy. As exciting. Uh, this platform we battle for the souls of man Those kidnapped and trapped upon stolen land Doesn't matter where you at on this earth Africa's the true origin of your birth Teaching you true health and wealth Knowledge and self-worth Instead of killing your health Going to jail over turf We all truth seekers asking questions Should we seek them in the shrine lodge or the lessons Is the answer ancestral science or religion Is it freedom or will he lynch a little different Is it Indian, Aboriginal, Indigenous people Should we worship money Money isn't still a root of all evil. We all born with men through shackles if we black. And the only thing that's gonna free us is the actual facts. Whose words will survive when we purge the lies? That curse the divine, cast the pearls to swine. Reverse the design, even merge divide. Side net a TV when two worlds collide. Might hurt to decide just who verbs will vibe. When we curve all the job, whether girls or guys. No herbs left alive in this earthly skies. Side at a TV when two worlds collide. Is it the gods and earths or the moors? Should we master UCC in commercial law? Is it being Muslim, Christians, or the Jews? Should we push the old school and need something new? Is it atheism, Egyptologists, Hebrew Israelites, flat earthers, herbalists? To get our people right, I'm in Rod Squad, RBG, your new covenant. Should we work for it? Should we overthrow the government? Should we all go for self being savages and vultures? Pan African or is hip hop our culture? Is it nationality or correct status? Should we integrate me to a Black Lives Matter? Should we hit the street? With the Panthers, unify the gangs, it's all out war, the right answer. Are we Asiatic or Arabian? Should we just free Dr. York and be Nawabi and a Sabian? Whose words will survive when we purge the lies? That curse the divine, cast the pearls to swine. Reverse the design, even merge divide. Side at a TV when two worlds collide. Might hurt to decide just who verbs will vibe. When we curve all the job, whether girls or guys. No herbs left alive in this earthly skies. Side at a TV when two worlds collide. All right, you already know what it is, man. God damn, two worlds collide like crazy um, today. Powerful debate. What do you think about that, Unk? I can't hear you, Unk. Oh, I said, I told everybody, yep. I said, catch the debate, right? These dudes were sharp. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I have my critiques, right? And I got, I figured out who I felt like one, man. But it was, it was, the, it was the back and forth throwing blows, Right off the top, man, I like the way Ali came out smoking, right? He, he came out smoking with some nice sources, well put together, showed some land, showed some brothers actually, you know, putting in work on land that was theirs, and they were smoking. And then Jabari, you know, Jabari came up with that Jabari thing, man. Yeah, man, yo kind of, ah, ah, Jabari kind of nice, yo. I'm going to have to give him that, yo. He was kind of, uh, yeah. he was, he was. His, his, his pre, it was flawless, yo. His slides was flawless, right? First round slides was kind of, I felt like a little bit too wordy. But man, by the time he got heated up, yo, that second, man, I, it was what nice, yo. He, what are you talking about? How I'm talking about Jabari. He was kind of, you know, I look for people being able to refute. Y'all added an extra refute at the end of it, right? I like when you have to refute within your presentation. But the damn refuting was flawless, man. Yeah, I got to give him that, yo. He was really, I enjoyed the thing. You know, me, for me, I need to hear certain things. And I heard it from both sides. And and I appreciate, you know, if I appreciate you, I'm a, I'm a critical dude of everybody and what they're doing, yo. Because I feel like people are listening, yo. And I felt like things were combated. They needed to be, to be combated. It was on point. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Them aborigines, right? If Ali, if that's what Ali could do, Right, and I felt like he was the best out of all of them, yo. 
I, I don't think they can – I don't think nobody else can kind of even come close to Ali, right, and get with Jabari. Jabari, you showed me something there, bro. You was – you know what I learned about you, Jabari? Which I which I, I didn't underestimate, but now I won't be slipping on the yo. You a killer, boy. You went there and went for the juggler when it was time. Yo, you dug all the way in. And with this time to dig the knife in and twist it, yo. Yo, you played him with that. Yo, he, Jabari tried to play soft style, ladies and gentlemen. When it was time, those moments, yo, it was a killer, yo. Yeah, he kind of had Ali like, oh, oh, yeah, he was a killer in that. But it was a good competition, man. And I appreciate that. That, that level right there, I appreciate. So, you know, it's going to get my vote for the debate. Well, what, I like, what I like is I'll say the same thing I said over there. Is that you could see the professionalism from both of the brothers? Yes. You didn't see no ad hominem. You didn't see them get mad at each other. They both joked, took a shot. They both stepped back, laughed, and joked it off, and then went in the car, start tearing it up. And that's what I like about it. That's the professionalism. This is why these are the um to me all the scholars are over here, man. So, but those of y'all who missed it, y'all missed a hell of a good debate. That's all I'm gonna tell you. They better get the rewind and pay for for that one. That's one with that. That's one I'm gonna pay for. I want all Ali people come in because somebody's saying, please let Ali people go first. See, they saying they agree with me. So if you're Ali people, come on in. I'm, we want to hear from you. We got the first brother up. Now I need the speaker. What's up, man? Talk to us. Unmute yourself. What do you think? Peace of the gods. Peace of the gods. I appreciate y'all uh, having me on. Huge fan of both you, Jabari, and uh, Chief Ali. So uh, what I thought it was, I, I'll be honest, right? I'm not too clear on who I would have picked for the debate as far as information-wise. However, I do feel like Jabari did stay more so on topic. See what I'm saying? So I would have to lean more towards uh, Jabari. But as far as being compelled by the information, I wasn't too uh, convinced that either side did their best. I will tell you, I do consider myself Indigenous Aboriginal. Ani Kitsua is, is what my, my nationality uh, would be. But I did have a quick question uh, for actually both of you gentlemen. I would ask uh, Brother Jabari, what would you say if someone were to be able to produce a bill of sale from uh, describing Chad White, another brother or sister that was describing their origin as being from this land? One, are you familiar with the SF-181 form? Two, and also, what would uh, what would you say about someone whose nationality or ethnicity has been described four different times over the span of 40 years um, on a census re report? Same individual being called Negro, Black, African-American, but before Mulatto, but before Indian. I'm interested I'm not able to hear you, bro. <laughs> I said you asked me three questions. I, I mean, did. You, I definitely you, did. I definitely did. You can't do it that way. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I stick with the. I stick with the. Uh, you said. The, you said what if I could find someone that has a bill of sale that says what? No, I said what would you say if someone would to were to present to you a bill of sale describing a brother or sister and their origins being described as being from this particular land? Because I what I hear a lot that takes place in a, in the movement is that people will sometimes defend an argument that I personally don't hear is being made. So I don't think that anybody in the Aboriginal movement contends that no Africans made it to the Americas on the transatlantic slave trade. I don't hear anybody say that particularly. So I don't think that anybody contends that those bills of sales are fake, but that doesn't obviously account for the entirety of people that, you know, were, uh, engaged in that uh in that transatlantic slave trade so i was asking what would you say if someone were to present you a bill of sale describing someone's origin as being from this land i would say they got it from my course two to five million native americans were enslaved prior to africans and during even the time that africans were there there were native people that were enslaved mm -hmm. that's not that's not a that that's a historical fact that's not something that um, would surprise me. Um, uh, so I think we need to understand that that occurred. But that does not mean, however, that the majority of the people that were brought here that were enslaved were not people of African descent. Um, and so uh, we we all, uh, anyone who's read anything knows that um, the, the European attempted to enslave uh, Europeans, uh, uh, Native people first. I mean, if you just are even familiar with the the, the work of Bartolome de las Casas. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. 
you know, I mean, you would, uh, he's talking about what they were doing to uh, native people. And then he says, well, we should enslave Africa. Kind of cut out there, brother. To Barbara, you cut out, you cut out to Barbara. If he, if he doesn't uh, go on, I do have a question for Chief Ali, and it's someone I've never heard anybody ask in the Aboriginal go movement. Ahead. Go ahead, brother. Um, if, is it possible, or would, first, well, I, I wish Jabari was on, but I'll say this. Um, is it possible that people of African descent, di continental Africans, earlier did uh, do earlier um, navigations, end up here, settled the land, and then described themselves or came under these, uh, the names is Kitua, Atak, not Atakans at, at that point, but uh, Cherokee, Choctaw, or whatever the original names would have been. Not possible? I can't hear you, brother. Huh? Yes, sir. I hear you now. Okay. Um, the first answer is is no, because this is one of the reasons I show the antiquity of their perception of their calendars. Mm -hmm. That Coba Stele shows that those people who were in the Mexico area mm -hmm. had calendars from their perception that mm -hmm. went back 41 octillion years in stone, bro. Mm-hmm. So they weren't, so that's an intelligent people that who oh, I didn't get a chance to show this who had the compass, mm -hmm. who could travel, who mm -hmm. who who knew the earth was a sphere and know the knew knew where to go on the earth. Mm -hmm. These people could have easily said our 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 ancestry comes from another place. They have nothing in the three codices that's mm -hmm. like, or any monuments saying anything about. Coming from somewhere, they mentioned ships. They mentioned uh, 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 navigation from mm. uh, Bonham Peck to Yucatan. They make, mm. all the stuff is there. You think them smart people who got calendars? They calculated back to fourteen octillion years in all these cycles. Who mapped the, the heavens and did all these things? Wouldn't be able to say, yeah, we from over here. But they did have codexes, the Codex uh, Botarini, that said uh, that. Eurasians mm -hmm. came on to this land from somewhere else. Okay. And so all I'm saying is that after that base population, there, there was a, that's why I showed the interactions. I showed the antiquity first with the ancient calendars and all that. Then I showed the interactions because later there were people from the continent we call Africa. Now we got to deal with the law too, because these people did not call themselves African. Mm -hmm. So now when they was coming back and forth, he talking about my point about Abu Bakari and Mansa Musa, they didn't, they didn't even know what an African was, bro. They had their own indigenous name for their tribe. They had a, a religion that they practiced, but mm -hmm. they didn't know what Africa was, bro. Okay. They had no conception of it. And so that's important too, when you start talking about polities in ancient times or modern times, mm -hmm. and you start dealing with these words that we're using that mm -hmm. are politically defeatist. Not only right. on this land, but over there on that land. That's a fiction. Right. Even even the people that were that we call Native Americans here were not contend that we wouldn't contend that they're native because if you look from a law disposition, a Black's Laws Dictionary, native meaning born abroad, also means denizen. Denizen also being someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so right. that's not the right. point. The point. The point that I was just to answer your question in, in, in clarity. One of the reasons why I showed the antiquity of how that civilization saw themselves. 41 octillion years ago, they saw themselves being born on that land from the back of a turtle. That's the myth. But they put it in calendars, and they were great astronomers. They had the language. I, I put the uh, the language that right there so you could see it, which we would call Mayan or then leads back to Epi Olmec, which those two are connected, the glyphs and everything. So now you have this base population that's not saying they're from anywhere. Mm. And then when you go into chronology, you start seeing, oh, coca leaves popping up in in uh in egypt from the population which i didn't get to show some of this stuff because we know we're going so fast mm -hmm. who was the compass developed amongst it was developed amongst the olmecs and the mayans used it too we have the, right. I, can pull this, I can pull all this stuff up now in the post debate we can go 10 hours i can show you all this stuff so all right, all we right. have the ability to navigate you know, yeah. doing those things that's all my we point. got a few people in the building jabari you want to finish responding real quick he's talking about his mic is yeah, hear you brother Wait, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to say that um, 
I, I continually hear uh, Brother Ali mention things that just, I mean, when you check the sources, they, they just don't, uh, it's a little frustrating. They just don't jive. He says it very, very confidently. But when you look at what he's talking about, they don't make sense. Now he's on another codex because he tried to say, why does this codex show people that are supposed to be black on it? From 1537 when Africans were enslaved in Mexico starting 1519, at least 1518, 1519. That's a, by the way, that's a, that's a ridiculous point to make. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it's a ridiculous point. You're saying, why is it that we see Africans on this codex in 1537? Your implication are, why are they calling them Negroes? But even I, if they- I'm the question. I'm not finished. Even if they were Negroes, even if what you are seeing is correct, there were people of African descent that were there that had already been enslaved. So I want you to know that um, he makes a lot of strange arguments. You question him on it. Then he then he tries to slip back to something else. He tells us that we're not from Africa. Then he says that we are from Africa. Then he then he he actually says, why are they saying that the Yamasi have Negroes? And then you look at it and everyone knows that the Yamasi had also taken informally enslaved people. You have to look at every single one of his sources. It is exhausting. But there's one thing that you will know. He didn't use any of his sources correctly. Not one. Brother Ali, you need to do better on this. Hey, do I get a chance to rebut what he's saying right now in the back chat? Every yeah. single one of your sources, yeah. every single one of your sources was poorly used. And I don't know why. I don't I don't get it. He shows us Inca stones. He goes on Inca stones for 15 minutes. And then he has to acknowledge, well, he claims, well, there's some of them that are real. There's some of them are forgeries. Yeah, I would love for him to show us a source. What does the source say about which is real and which is fake? The, the sources say that they are forgeries. So, but if he was arguing that some were real and some weren't, why did he say that? So, I mean, uh, this this is this is he he has the ability to say things very confidently. I'm telling you, he lost his calling. He should be selling used cars because you would buy an old Chevy Nova, a 1982 Chevy Nova, and be like, this is gonna be the joint, and it wouldn't even get right. you to. All right, listen, both of y'all, y'all going to have to keep this short because we got a lot of people that want to ask y'all questions. Yeah. Ali, well, so I want to say something about what he just said. You yeah, know, Ali. Um, I showed a codex, and I mean, I could pull it up. I don't know if I could share. Can I share stuff? No? Yes, you could. Go ahead. All right, so let me pull it up real quick. Uh, I don't even know how to share. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, quick. just go to open it up. Open up what you want to share. Click on it, and then go down, and you'll see it right down there where it says present. <laughs> And it has a screen that has a plus sign on it. Hold on, I don't see it. Uh, it's not on StreamYard. On StreamYard. Okay. All right. So there we go. All right. So uh, let me share screen window. It's not showing my um. For some reason, it's not showing my ability to uh, share. I see the Chrome tab, but I what I what I have in preview. You can't show it. I showed it before. But anyway, I will. I, if, if I can share stuff, I need to be able to share it. But I'm trying to share this right now. And when I click on present, share screen, uh, window, maybe I could just do it. And click on in that window what you want to share. And then huh? share. A I, I, it says, it's, okay, let me tell you what it says. It says preview, but it's blank. Do you want me to share it? Uh no, I don't want you to have control over my slide. <laughs> well, I, you know what I do? What right I, now you, ain't got no slide. <laughs> you know, right now you ain't got no slide. <laughs> okay, somebody share share what I'm showing. I'm no. sharing it right now. If you don't like it, you can tell me to take it down. I don't have a problem doing that. What is he sharing, Jabari? He's trying to I'm share a book right, with this with the source that he just mentioned. You talking about this, right? Hold on, let me see. Uh, it's a Negro. All right, so hold up. Let me see that right there. Okay, that slide that I want to take. So now let me break break this point down that Jabari just made. This is uh, 1535 to 1537. Uh, These are leaders in Mexico, kings and leaders. So from 1519, you're going to tell me somebody went from a slave to being a king and then killing other people with the Spanish. Brother, that is absolutely ridiculous. That was the worst 
comeback you could have ever made on that point because what you're trying to say in less than 20 years they went from coming there as slaves took over mexico city and start killing people bro that is absolutely retarded bro for you to even think that you could bring that particular point that that's like us going somewhere as slaves right now in africa right we're going to take over the whole country the politics the languages and start understanding that and these were negroes right here so that point that you made was ridiculous. Now, Jabari, I haven't I haven't poked at you as much as you poked at me about these things that you're you're saying. I think that you're having a hard time with material you never saw in your life before. And and not only did I show that slide from Codex uh, Teller, uh, uh, Teller, I showed earlier things before slavery. This is a chain and lineage of people from Mexico from from uh. The, or when the Spanish came to way before. So what your your problem was that you were stuck in rhetoric and and and, and throwing jabs at me mm. instead of answering each source one by one. For you to say that I didn't even, even stay on the, the debate topic, bro. Everybody in here looking at you like you crazy. Because you can disagree with me. That's one. You can say, well, I don't agree with this. But for you to say I had nothing that pertained to the subject. Bruh, that is the worst cognitive dissonance that I, like I'm not gonna say that about you. I disagree with a lot of things that you said, and you did not discount a lot of what I said. But for you to say that what I showed <laughs> had nothing to do with the topic, Jabari, my brother, you are you older than me. I'm 48. <laughs> we don't do, bro. We don't do that. that. Now you can disagree with me because that thing that you know kind of went what, like, bro, Jabari, bro. I, you know what? You know what, bro? Like you saying about me, like on some real as a professional, I will lose respect for you if you say that one more time. Because you can say I disagree with you, Ali, on this point. Pull the slide back up and let's go in. And I'll go with, I, I ain't got shit to do today, nigga. <laughs> wrong, nigga. Yeah. I ain't got shit to do today, nigga. Wow, well, four. I will go, no, 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 no. Why are you my brother? I did not take a lot of pokes at you. I stayed on the information. You was taking pokes at it, nigga. Yeah, he was throwing and, at and, you. and not addressing each slide. Mm. That's a lot of stuff, bro. Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. He said, so, bro, stop, stop, saying, stop saying what I didn't do and tell me to pull. Wait, 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 let me finish because I'm going to stop talking. Stop saying what I didn't do and tell me to pull that shit up right now and let's go over each slide with these calendars that's 41 octillion years talking about the story. Bro, I will blow you out of this motherfucking chat, bro. Mm. Like, bro, you can't do that to me. Well, I'm not mad you disagree. I'm mad that you are trying to say that what I was saying did not pertain to the topic, brother. You crazy? Wait, Ali. No, you know I was there, right? Same thing. Oh, sorry, yeah. I know I was there, right? Yeah. Let me tell you something, Ali. I seen the way you was trying to set him up with the left hand in the first round. I kind of gave you the first round. The way you laid your thing out. Now, Jabari felt like Jabari was felt like you know that you wasn't doing nothing. That's how he felt. I felt like. You were setting the premise up real well. That's how I felt. But to him, he in there, he's saying, what the hell is you bringing? I seen I seen what you was doing. I seen it. I seen it. But I felt like that was a swing round. I, Bro, that I, was cognitive I, I, dissonance. I, I, I love my brother. He's still my brother. You know, I ain't going <laughs> to take no jabs at him. You know, I ain't going to take no personal. I'm not going to even call you a pseudo. But I will say. Hold off on the jabs, everybody. Hold on. He's still talking. Respond, Respond to Barry. Hold up on the jab, though. That's okay. your problem. That's let me your say, problem. let me say, I didn't jab at him more than he jabbed at me. He <laughs> so body slammed me on an arc. <laughs> I mean, y'all forget what, 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 what he said. Oh, uh, come on now. The reason why he's hot is because when we started, we looked, who are you here for? There were many more people in the room that were here to see Ali. At the end, who won? Many more people said Jabari won. So even some of your people said, what did you do, Chief? That's what that means. And we know that that's what happened. 
So you could be heated if you want. The reality is I didn't say you didn't say anything in the entire debate that was part of the topic. I said the entire first round was a wash. You didn't, we are talking about whether African people, whether the black folks in the United States and the Americas are indigenous to the Americas or are African. Folks, when you look at the, when Sonetta finally lets y'all cheapos see this on YouTube, <laughs> cheapos, right? When y'all finally see it on YouTube, you're going to see the whole first round, he didn't talk about the topic. The whole first round. And then I played his own words. He said several times, several times, and very clearly two weeks ago, that we did not come from Africa. And then the other half of the debate, he's arguing we did come from Africa. Which is it? The reality is that he did a lot of things that did not fit together. He took jigsaw puzzles from different boxes and is upset that when he put them on the table, they didn't fit. That's what happened. All and right. the reality is, wait, the reality is on this source, he said, why should there be people of African descent on this, um, on this uh, codex? First of all, the first thing he would have to do if he's going to do something scholarly. Now, um, you have to listen to this and tell me if I'm clear, right? He just looked at the word Negros. Right. He didn't translate it. Then he tells us that they're all kings. And then he says, why should there be people who are called Negros on here when it's from 1535 to 1537? And it seems very clear that he doesn't, he's not realized, he did not realize, those of you who are in the room, you know that this is the case. He did not realize that Africans had already been brought to Mexico starting in 1518, so that there would be Africans there. So I, it's clear. And then he bumbled it and said, well, they became kings. First of all, the folks that are dead look different than the folks that are in the chair. <laughs> I'm just doing the same look as if he is. All right, all right, yo. You see Reggie comment. You see Reggie comment. I mean, come on. If Reggie says it's a tie, that means I won. <laughs> Y'all know that. If it's a tie, that means I won. I know why Reggie's mad at me. <laughs> Reggie spent a month saying, Yo, Mayweather going to have a lump on his head. Yo, Mayweather's the wrong one. Yo, May listen. Well, you look he like Errol Spence right now, bro, when Terry <laughs> Crawford knocked his ass out last year. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Errol Spence right now, bro. Hey, <laughs> you, bro, you got knots on your head, bro. I'll take, I'll take the debate. Your head is a knot right now, bro. The like, debate. Yeah, I lumped you up, bro. Hey, everybody on this panel know I lumped you up today, bro. Back, you hear bro. what nobody say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, hold on, hold on. Everybody stop. Everybody stop. Everybody, everybody stop. Everybody stop, Jabari. Everybody stop. Let me move on to um I want to get the car. Um my man right here with the um how you pronounce your name, brother? K has the feet in Kian. Kian. Yeah, you, 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 can, you say Ken. Ken works. All right, Ken. What what do you think about the debate, man? What do you think? So I do have a question for um, Chief Ali and uh, Brother Jabbar. Tell us. Uh, who but I, but my, my perspective. Sure, sure. Yeah, my perspective is Ali Wash Jabbar, and I and I think he especially did it in the first round because oh. he established that you had a black Aboriginal American black people presence that was, you know, like a nation established, well well established. Well before there was any slave trades, shipping, people being brought like like in in at, at huge numbers, mass numbers where these people were 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 all over the country. So on top <laughs> of that, and the fact that when you had the Q and A, Ali answered masterfully every question, and Jabari couldn't answer none. You know what I mean? Like he didn't like you know he tried respect. You know what I mean? But. He didn't. He didn't like. He didn't really answer no like questions. Like, admittedly, he, he said he, he did, and then he shifted it to like, I think I, you know, you can't trust anything Ali said. You know, whatever. But everybody <laughs> knew what that was. You know what I mean? But I respect it. It was a great debate. I love like, I love like how this was like, like how the setup was. You know what I mean? Like, like, like compared to how it used to be. Even yeah. like this is like the modern day professional, right? Yeah, very much so. I, I like. I, I dig that a lot. You know what I mean? But. 
to my uh, to my question. Um, okay, I'll start with with Jabari first. Uh, question to Jabari. So when you when you you have the statement that the Inca stones were fake, right? Did you also pick up on the fact that Ali mentioned that that there were Spanish explorers that that talked about it and discussed it in and you know well before the the person that you said faked it in like kind of recent times? Did you kind of do you acknowledge that perspective and the fact that the, you know those duplicates? I didn't know that part that those duplicates were made for like uh, tourism. I didn't know that part. Uh, I was, you know, I was aware just, you know, based on, the, you know, being in the university uh, studies. But were you aware? Did you pick up on that? Because because your point was the gentleman who proved that it was fake or something like that. But you have explorers that was well before that, that, that you know, talked about the Inca Stones. How, what was your perspective on that? It, it sounds to me like you're really trying to fix something that your boy did wrong. The reality is, he said that there were copies used for commerce and all this other stuff. That's not what the um, the the sources say. That's not what the sources say. This is from Atlas Obscura, and it very clearly says, "Why would he use this?" Look at this. The first bones turned up from the property of a local farmer, Basio Ushia, right? Who brought them to the attention of the good doctor? But then let's go down here. But following a BBC special critical of the stones in 1973, Ushia admitted to carving the stones in himself and artificially aging them in order to pass them off as ancient artifacts. The reality is you are trying to say something that the sources don't. Do some research on the stones. It has been a long time. We're talking, listen, 50 years since people have acknowledged that this is a hoax. And for you to also say that you thought that he supported that there were lots of people here in the beginning that were black and indigenous. I don't know what you were watching. I even explained that much of what he did <clears throat> show what European um, uh, uh, explorers said. And he showed pictures and said, these are black people. Because they're dark, really? So everyone dark is black. Is that what he's saying? Yes. And then also he says very, he said very confidently, he said very confidently that when you look at the Jesuit, by the way, it's Jesuit, Jesuit letters. If you don't, if you can't pronounce something, you're not that familiar with it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> I don't. I, don't I, I that doesn't. I can't say someone doesn't enunciate something. They don't have a knowledge of what anyway, enunciated uh, like the way someone else enunciates. You're not that that familiar with it, is what I said. Because if you had done a lot of research, you would understand. Anyway, he <laughs> said that the Jesuit letters describe people who are black. When you read the letters, they don't say that. He also said that um, <laughs> that. Uh, Brother, I showed it to the audience. Now they, listen, he, he now, showed the receipts of the people no, in no, there, no, in no, like, no, like, no, like no, word no, by no, word no, in those no, letters. No, Ali, crazy. <laughs> it's not your turn to talk right now, brother. It isn't. Apologies, my bad. Also talks about Giovanni Verrazzano, and even on his screen, it says Giovanni said that they are dark, not like the Ethiop not unlike Ethiopian. But then two lines down, he says their features are like the Oriental. Mm -hmm. Two lines. He didn't read that. It was on the screen. Let me um, see that again. Let me see that again, Jabari. I don't believe. I'll show it to you. Let me see. I'll show it to you. Show it right now. That way, you know you didn't kill that. I mean, the reality is that the apples are going to say he won regardless. That, I mean, that's just we know this about y'all. But the reality is, he, he did not afford himself well. Listen. Ank and I, uh, we brothers, but we're not buddies. We argue all the time. Y'all yeah. are the same team, bro. Nah. We need to know that. We <laughs> nah, argue he, oh. so heated that Simon has to call him and call me and say, what are y'all doing? Stop it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We argue all the time. He is not in my court. That's on specifics of, of African history. When it comes to us, y'all going to tag team. Stop, brother, stop. The reality oh. is 
that he showed sources that when you look at the source, it falls apart. Here goes, let me just show you Giovanni Verrazano. All right, let's see. Right? This is Giovanni Verrazano. And here it says here, they are dark in color, not unlike the Ethiopians with thick black hair, not very long, blah, 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 blah. But then he goes down here and he says, in the last two respects, they resemble the Orientals, particularly those from the farthest Sinarian regions. By the way, the Sinarian regions, Sin, he's talking about China, by the way. Oh, he's saying they're dark skin and they look like they're Chinese. Mm -hmm. He's just saying that they're dark. Mm -hmm. And it so, was on the screen. He just didn't read it. So he's mentioning that they're both black and they look like Asians. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. both yep. dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That fits. So, that fits. That's that it. Good. And he okay. says, not unlike the Ethiopians. He didn't say he didn't say they are the Ethiopian. Right. He said not unlike they're dark like black people that we've seen. Yeah, the, yeah. the Africans. When he says, but their features look like they're Orientals. So he's telling it, you he's describing them. That's not yes, what sir. Ali said. That's not what Ali said. I have to show you Ali's source. Sure, sure. So so you do know there's records stating that the, the um Omekian Mayan people, they were also described as black phenotype, but they had like Almost like uh, uh, slanted eye. Like some people say, I, have, I look like I have slanted eyes. Like my like I'm. They say look, look like, I, like I'm high all the time. That's not the case. But you know, you know what I mean. Like not like Asian eyes, but like oval shaped eyes. You know, that, that was supposed to be a specific phenotype of Black Americans. You know, uh, that originated. In America. Uh, I'm not saying we look like Asian Black Asians, but you know what I mean. Like that was a specific phenotype that I remember being described in uh, in that. You know what I mean. So. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, well, you know, fit but it's black and Asian. That's what you really you said. Find, you can't fit 10 pound, pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. It's just the reality is he's telling, he's describing what he sees and he's not saying what Ali said he said. You read the source. Yeah, listen, this is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> because we heard what he said and then I show you the source and it doesn't say what he said. Right now, you should just say, listen, I rock with Ali, but he was wrong. I mean, I, I don't even understand why we're doing this part of it. I would like to hear what Ali has to say, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I, still, I still have a question for Ali, but I still want, I, I do want to hear what Ali's perspective is on well, it. Yeah. Come on, man. Well, I, if that's possible. I, if I can comment on this without losing my question, ask me the question. I'm going to address everything that he said in the Jess Sweet letters and everything, but I don't care. Just, okay, okay bad, bad. What? You're still what? saying Jess Sweet? Bro, I don't care nothing about you trying to, <laughs> you trying to play rhetoric, bro. Like, you know, we know what kind of game. And see, that's the thing about you, bro. You, you're showing me a new face of, for Jabari, but it's okay. Yes, so, yes. You want, you want to ask me this question, then I'm going to do a double dip on this. Bad, bad, bad. So uh, my question is, it's pretty simple. Do you feel like um, the Buenos Aires skull that was found in, um, in the Americas, do you feel like that's also a, um, a proper, uh, you know, a point or position to... Uh, to state how long um, uh, we had civilizations uh, 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 in the Americas, you know, of uh, Aboriginal descent. Do you, you feel like that, that's a um, a good point, or not as you know, not as not really? That's that's all. Well, uh, here's, the, here's the thing about the Buenos Aires skull. For people who don't know, the Buenos Aires skull was a skull that was uh, discovered by. Uh, uh, the Amagino family and the Amagino family were anthropologists and archaeologists in Argentina. And so because it was found below a pre uh, uh, uh it's, a, it's like a, a block of limestone that would denote that it's one about probably about 1.5 million years old, then uh, Amagino began to use that. Now, if you don't know Florentine Amagino, he was someone who was into phylogenetics and they give him partial credit for the development of that system. But because he was all, he was also saying what I'm saying at the time, that the antiquity of these things and these fossils that I'm finding are in certain stra uh, strata of the earth, they sent people over there with him to test him. And I have all of that listed in my book. I didn't get a chance to go through all of that. So with that particular find, I would say uh, no because of the provenance in that find. When we get something that's found, there's a, 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 a archaeological report that's done on that particular thing. And so the the uh, 
the skull that was uh, uh, denoted to, to this particular thing, it doesn't have a problem. It's fine. There are others that do. And so most of the book that most people will come across is from the book by Michael Cremo, Forbidden Archaeology. There's some pseudo stuff in there and some real stuff in there. But a person who is uh, pro-evolution to the point where they're pretty much in high agreement with uh, the consensus of how Europeans uh, will, will, will present that, they will take Michael Cremo's work and look at the pseudo stuff that he presents in it and not the other stuff. And you don't do that as a scholar. You look at the whole thing, which is what Jabari is doing with the Jesuit letters and the Eka Stone. So let's go back to this Jesuit letters. Jabari put on the screen that the Jesuit letters had Negroes from Guinea. That's one. And Negroes, the terror that was American. Now, inside of the Jesuit letters that I show in the book and that Jabari posted in the debate, he just, oh, Jabari just said the Jesuit letters did not say they were black. You know what? You're partially right, you rhetoric to stepping <laughs> because they didn't use the word black. They used the word Negro, which means black. Bruh, are y'all actually sitting on this panel? Show it again, Ali. Show your slide again. Let's see. Let's go back to exactly what. Let me see what you're talking about, about because Jabari just did a good job with his. Let me see if you can combat that. Nah, nah, bro. I'm about to this go for back. the whole contest yeah. right here. <laughs> Let's see. Everybody can see this clear as day. This one little piece right here. You we ain't got to talk about that for this. On, I see on. what you did, Jabari. I'm agreeing with Jabari. Yeah, on yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Now, now what you doing? Letters, you can agree with whoever you want to agree with, but I'm about to show you what he showed and what I have in the book. All right, go ahead. Let me see what you did. Let me see what you did. How the fuck is this possible? <laughs> that sounded crazy, yo. That's funny. That, that's bro, funny, this bro, like, bro, what is he? Like, Jabari didn't turn out to be a whole liar, bro. Like, I, I mean, I thought we were having a debate. <laughs> now I'm a liar, um, like, now I'm you, liar. You went to just straight, I'm a lie. I'm alive, oh, man. Hold on. That, that's where you went. Hold on. Let me pull up exactly what you show. Hey, this Ali. Because this don't, you're not making any sense, brother. Oh, no, no. I'm about to make sense. Just give me a, give me a second. Don't try let's to see. We, Agent Bar, let's see if we can change that magical slide. Let's oh, see. No, we I watch it. Shit. I'm about to go right back to the Jesuit letters and read that part what, about what, what language were the Jesuit What language were the Jesuit letters? letters? And read that part about Negroes de Guan. All right, here we go. All right, let's see. So now, let me see. Let me see. My book. If I can't share my, I can't share. Somebody got to share what I'm sharing. I can't. Where is that? I don't see you. Where you at? You I'm right share? here. I'm, I'm. I got my book up, and I'm on page 48. All right, go ahead. Hit the screen share. The present. Oh, all right. So let me present. Share screen. Hey, go ahead. All right. Window. Oh yeah, it came up. All right. Bingo. All right. Where all is right. that? So now. All right. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. Me quoting the Jesuit letters. All right. Read it slow. At the bottom of his screen. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish what I'm saying. He Did you make it larger so we can read Africans, it? Africans, when Africa, I'm, I'm trying to make my point. because you. I'm read, asking you to make wait. it larger so we can read it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to argue with you. I want to read big. it. We about to make it real big. You, you, had, you, had this quote, you had this quote at the bottom of your page right here. Right? Oh, and you can ahead. see my source, number 15. I'm going to show you exactly where I got it from because you was quoting from uh uh somewhere okay i got africans and native americans right here and i had some ibbits in here but mm -hmm. this source is from africans and native americans the same place they get right, so now i don't even know how jabari just said the jesuit letters did not say they were black because right here they're talking about africans and calling them negroes and indios then it says when africans are referred to in the jesuit letters they are always called negroes de guine black mm -hmm. of guinea to mm -hmm. distinguish them from Negroes de Terra, blacks of the land of the Americas. Mm -hmm. That's just one point. Like, bruh, how can you just, just wow. like, if you go back and you say, you said the Jesuit letters did not say they were black. Bruh, what are you talking about? Damn. Wow. Bruh, like, I, you know what? You know what? And I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to the East Coast now. But like, Jabari, my dear brother Jabari, you need to stink. You need, you need to stink in that damn seat. You are a bro. Listen, now listen. I know. Now I know. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying. I did not interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say nothing. 
So let me respond. Now you're going, no, 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 no. I didn't say nothing. Let me finish my point. Because you're going to sink in this seat right now. Damn, 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 damn. This brother, this brother, this wait, let me finish. This brother just said five five minutes ago that the Jesuit letters did not say they were black. He put the same thing on his presentation screen that I'm showing right now. Scroll the paper down real quick. We'll Can I please? No, oh, no, I'm not finished. I'm not finished because I was saying the same thing. No, uh, you. no, no, you're not going to do that. See, now you're being. So now, so let, let me tell you what I'm saying. I'm an assassin, bro. You know, let him finish. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, you know, well, you don't want to finish. See, now, now just... what's happening now is now it's not just fun and games. You're getting disrespectful because you are a liar. Nobody's That's getting me. disrespectful for. Her. And uh-huh. so now, I, what I just did is Jabari showed this on his screen during the presentation. I have it in my book. I just said it. I'm showing the exact same thing. And this brother said that the Jesuit letters did not say that the Americans were black. Brother, they saying it right here in front of your face. You are a liar, bro. That's like, the wow. first time you no, said this. No, 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 no. I did not interrupt you, bro. <laughs> Sonetta. No, I don't bro, call Sonetta. I didn't call Sonetta when you was talking. Stop. I didn't call Sonetta when you was talking. Let That's me finish my point. You said the same thing. Let me bro, respond. I don't care what I'm I can say the same thing over and over, but let me finish my point. Let him finish, bro. Oh, so make the point. Have him make the point. He said the same thing four times. Have him make the point. Have him make the point. Have him make the point. Now. I'm going to be quiet till he stops talking because no, right now you don't have no respect and you, now you're not a gentleman because oh. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you, and I don't want to partake in this if we're going to go back and forth like that. What I'm saying is you are a liar, bro. Oh, man. You are a god liar. Now, let's go back to the uh, the, the the last one that you just did, which is right above this, where uh, we got the 15 foot. I got I got more depictions of this, but let's go back to the scenario and these, this, this, uh, Oh, man. Let's go back to this uh, Verrazano. Damn. The Verrazano quote where he says the Orient and the Scenarian regions. See, y'all playing games. Y'all ain't about to play games with me because uh, where we go? Let me see. Negroes, Negroes. Blah, blah, blah. I think that it's the next one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is Verrazano. Right? Now, he calls them dark in color, not unlike the Ethiopians. Hey, that's the phrase. That's the first place. Now, when you go to this part, he says, from what we could tell from observation in the last two respects, they resemble the Orientals. Now, this is one mm-hmm. group we're talking about, particularly those from the Sinarian regions. I don't know why black people trying to act like, like you don't got a cousin that, <laughs> got, that got 4C hair, and then the next cousin over got a uh, three C hair that's wavier or straight. One is darker than the other ones. One got eyes that look like this one got like the phenotypes amongst African-Americans vary so much because of all the places that we come from and the admixtures that have happened, which is one of the reasons I showed the base population. Then I showed people coming from Africa, people coming from these traits are now going and circulating through at this time that, uh, that, uh, Verrazano is talking about the Orient. I showed the definition of Orient. Orient just means the East. Then he went to say the Sonarian regions. All right. We got, All right. We, got, okay. we got cousins, uh, uncles that have phenotypes and features right on our block that vary all types of ways amongst the African-American population. And, so, and lastly, on this Ica stone thing, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish this particular on the Ica stones. Cause bro, see you, 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 real, you doing? you're real disrespectful. Cause I ain't you got, Yo, Ali, you gotta let him go in. You gotta he, let him respond. He's got about three in the oh, hold on, bro. This is not, this is like, like, bro, I had three points. You said these things, I'm rebutting each one. That, that, that you said. I'm rebutting. You're each saying time. the so same you, thing. You know what, bro? These, this is games you playing. Like, I, I I don't even, you know what I mean? I don't even, I'm about to lose respect for you as a dude, for real. 
playing games and now you cut me off. <laughs> I'm and I mad. Cut you off, and I had one more point to make about the Eco Stones, so I can prove. You had to make your point. You had to make it, So like, ain't nobody cutting you off, bro. Like, yeah, you're not drawing no emotion. Good, you're not drawing no emotion. What you're doing is you're showing your character, bro. So chill out. Let me let me finish my point. <laughs> All right, so what you got them Inga Stones? You got them Inga, you know them Inga Stones ain't going nowhere. I got you uh, like hey, 10 I don't years care ago. What y'all, I don't care what y'all say. I don't Come care on. what y'all say, because now y'all got to deal with the thread of what I said about that. Let them, let them finish, y'all, so he can pass the yeah, mic. Let me, let me finish. So now, all right. Oh, oh, can we can we go to share my screen? Let me, let me, let me uh, stop sharing and then present my screen. Share screen. And I want to bring up this again. So that we could be clear about this, because sometimes we'd be going fast, and y'all and, and folk folk don't realize. <laughs> all right, so this is the book, right? Oh. What the only re the only reason I showed the book in this presentation was to show this. Let me go down. This is the Eco Stones that I showed, right? The purpose of me showing this particular map is to show plate. Textonics, right? North America, South America, a continent that was lost that this little uh, Indian uh, 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 alleged that he was uh, um, um, carving these stones. The brother just proved to you, and I have this a source in the book, the stones were discovered before uh, the colonization, when the Spanish, the Spanish are reporting and the stones are already there with the people who are called the Incas. This in this book. I'm going to show that source. So anybody, you, he couldn't fake no goddamn stone. They've been making these stones. Next, North America, South America, the lost continent, and West Africa. These ancient new plate tectonics. And so I went to show you the lost continent of Zealanda, which is considered Earth's a continent. The reason why you string these two together is because it shows provenance in the maps of the same civilization that was writing about antiquity into the quadrillions of years. Like, what I'm showing you is how you take scientific facts and thread them together in a thesis. My thesis was, you can't even make this map you can't even make this map of a continent that they said was there because this was just discovered. All right, all right. Right here, the eighth continent, the one that said he said that called me a said he saw a suit said he called me a pseudo. It was never no damn continent in the eighth ocean. Now the white folks verifying it, and an indigenous American record is the one that actually has the most antiquity to it in describing the plate tectonics, bro. Y'all just got to look at the sources. All right. Thank you, you African mind. All right. Aboriginal <laughs> salute, guy. Aboriginal yeah. salute. All right. All right. So um, now, um, now, hold on. Hold on. Brother Jabari, I'm going to let you respond. But yeah. Brother Jabari, you know that you are the people's champ. Yo behind be doing the same thing too, brother. So please stop this. You go in, you go long, you're long-winded too. No, no, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. I want you to recognize we just had a four-hour debate. This, <laughs> party. this brother, you ever see when someone's in a prize fight and they get knocked out? And when the ref finally wakes them up, they get up and they start swinging. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> it's been four hours. This is not time for you to relitigate this, uh, Dr. Ali <laughs> Muhammad. There's nothing to do. And I am frustrated because in about 12 hours, I have to be on a plane. I have not packed, right? Mm. It was supposed to be on Saturday. We, you couldn't do it Saturday. So we said, okay, we'll do it on Sunday. But I, I don't, I can't, you can't go and do the whole debate again. Especially when what you're describing ethers you. The <laughs> debate is about whether, I don't know why I have to say this again. People, our people are indigenous or indigenous to this land or we are the African. And so what he does is he shows you a, a large number of commentaries from European explorers. And he says, they said that these people were us. 
And then when I go to the source, by the way, I want you to understand when he says something ridiculous, you know how much time it takes to find exactly what he's saying that's ridiculous? <laughs> you have to understand the kind of work that goes into this. But because I, I'm, I've watched him enough, I go, that can't be real. Let me just find it. So when I'm showing you that I can put his quote that he did not show on the screen on the screen, that means I had to run down his source and his source impeaches him. His point is that the indigenous people of this land were us. But when you read the, the quote from Jack Forbes, that is from the Jesuit, Jesuit, Jesuit letters, it actually says they always distinguish the people that they are saying are dark here from the people they are saying that are dark in Africa. That is the point. Mm -hmm. That's the point. How could you read the same thing that ethers you with confidence and get ethered in a private debate and then get ethered in a public YouTube channel? Stop, Ali. And then say it four times. And I'm saying, are you going to make a point? You just say the same thing. Now, let's talk about Verrazano since you did. Verrazano says that these people were dark. But when we look at their features, they look oriental like the people from the furthest Cenarian regions. He's saying they're dark, but they look Chinese. That is what he's saying. That's your source. That ethers you once again. And then finally, Ali has an old book. Commend him. Sometimes old books get refuted. <laughs> And everyone in the world, every scholar in the world is now saying those Inca things are fake. The guy that said he found them has admitted to carving them and he's still running down the road. <laughs> Honk. Honk. You have to understand why I'm frustrated because we're not gonna relitigate an entire debate, which he lost. And then I'm going to prove to you why he lost again for another four hours. I don't have that kind of time. I don't have that kind of time. So he, he, he thinks that this is not a scholarly debate. This is Apollo Showtime at the Apollo. You can do all the theatrics and everything. Doing all this and all that. Do all of that. The reality is your sources impeach you. And the only people that are going to agree with you are the people who are already on Team Abo. Because regardless of what you say, they're going to agree. I saw Sister Bethy come in. Mm -hmm. Now, look, <laughs> I think that if Sister Bethy was in that debate, she would have made a comment. Did you see Sister Bethy make a debate on a comment on the debate? No. no. Sister Bethy was in the, she was in the building. Yeah, I seen her. I seen her make comments. Yeah, she was in the building, Jabari. She brought to say to you, regardless of what they say, regardless of what anyone says, they're going to argue this because this is the sportsification of knowledge. Mm -mm -mm. I'm a Mets fan, even though they just traded their Mets pitcher. It sucks. I'm a Mets fan. That's not how stout information and scholarship is supposed to be. You're supposed to get new information and then change your ideas. He will never change his ideas. Mm -hmm. Every scholar says those Inca um, stones are fake. And then after I showed it to him, then he says, well, I did say some of them were fake and some of them are real. Well, how would you know which ones are fake and which ones are real? <laughs> By the way, the guy that found them says he carved them. Stop, Ali. Know when to pump the brakes because the car is already off the cliff. <laughs> Stop <No>. it. <laughs> Stop it. He, the, the referee woke him up and he's... <laughs> Stop it. The, the people can see here that that doesn't make yeah, sense. Great. And then he said, Jabari said they weren't black, but they're saying they're black here. You know what we're talking about, Ali. I'm not disputing whether they're dark skinned or not. Are they us? And the Europeans distinguish them from us. The same Europeans that you want to use as your source. They're distinguishing them from us. And he's, he's, it's on the screen and he's pretending like he didn't read it. He's reading something and he's pretending that it supports what he's saying. <laughs> it doesn't support what you're saying. I'm done. All right, let me go on over to... Um, that was good back and forth right there, yo. That was a good Sam. after show back and forth, bro. Sometimes and I can't be here much longer. I can't be here much longer. Uh, I, just, I got... I got um, Hold on, Sam. If it's a question, y'all... Y'all got to be a minute or two, and that's it. That's it. No going back and forth no more, because we got to move forward. And we got the people in here that want to ask the question. Suntan, what's up? Brother Ali, this is for you. 
Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I did this, and this with all due respect. I think, brother, I knew you could have just blew the thing away if you, because what you were saying and what your premise was, was you was taking out the out of Africa theory. Now, that would have been, yeah, because if you saying that they was already here, then there could be no out of Africa theory. If, if, if people was already here because the premise is that, you know, they they didn't come from Africa here. They was already here. And I wanted to know how did they get here? Did they just pop up or something, <laughs> things like that? So I was thinking if you had shown some sort of journey or some sort of way that they got here first, then you would have been able to sway me. But you never showed how they ever got here, you know, and you didn't blow the out of Africa theory away because you never really focus on that point. So could you answer that? Do you think that you could have blew, blew away the out of Africa out of Africa theory or that what you not was not trying to do. You was trying to show something different. That's it. Yes sir. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. I see the brother but I can't see myself. I just got knocked off or something. Yeah I could just see me for right now. But um you know Okay, but wait. yeah, so if, uh, if everybody can hear me, I'm not on, uh, you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Okay, great. So now, right. when we come to the Outer Africa Theory, one of the things that I tried to do in the, in the third round and my last five minutes, <clears throat> this is why I use Albert Perry, and I started talking about bottlenecks. Now, one thing you have to consider, I, yeah, I'm not showing anything right now on my slide, but I can go back down to that. Hold up, let me go back to that. Well, if you don't want to, you I just wanted to hear your speech on Yeah, yeah. So so I'm gonna tell you what my, my thought process was in this. Yeah, I did, first yeah. of all, first of all, when you start dealing with human evolution and uh -huh. we dealing with uh 20, 20 minute rounds, right? Right. I have to present information. My strategy was the audience, I'm not, I'm not disrespecting the audience, but when okay. you start talking about higher levels of science without building yourself up into that, you could lose the audience. So I'm a teacher by trade. Like that's my whole history. I was a principal of a school. Okay. So one of the reasons why I started sourcing primary uh, temples where we, we, the indigenous peoples, painted those temples was to establish that there was a black race with the phenotypes here that never said that they were African. That's first thing. Okay. So now I'm going through that repetitive thing. When I got to Albert Perry, which I successively did prove is that his descendants S and P networks have never been found in Africa. That's important. And they were, they went to Cameroon to try to find it. And amongst the population that they did find uh, the AO and the AOO variant, they still couldn't find it. Now that leads to say, maybe they need to do more research. So as it stands, that's the oldest DNA. And I showed that when they said, even in the genetic port report that Albert Perry was born in South Carolina. No, Albert Perry moved to South Carolina in the same city that I grew up in Columbia. Albert Perry on official state documents was born in Florida at the time that it was an Indian territory owned by the Spanish. And the uh, at that time, the Seminoles, and those Indians who were warring with the United States, he's born in that. I showed uh, uh, a primary source on that, if y'all remember that. So the reason why I wanted to show the the ancient DNA here not being proven from Af is from Africa is because, believe me, they want to prove that's from Africa. But they literally locked in and they can't prove that those S&P networks are from Africa. They haven't been able to do it. So now... The reason why I started talking about bottlenecks, which is me running out of time, is because when you introduce the bottleneck conversation into the discussion, this is when you can get into the discussion of what Brother Ken Way was asking. He asked it about the Buenos Aires skull and other things. My agenda was to show that based on the bottlenecks, I can prove that there were migrations, which is why I was showing the map for the ecosystems. By the way, which, I mean, people think it's funny, but I have a statement from that same man saying that he only told uh, 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 the people who uh, he told that they were fake because they were pressing him and he was afraid. And I have that that, that direct statement from, from him. And I'm going to show it before we get off of here. But my point is the chronology of what I was showing was to show first antiquity, then to get deeper into antiquity, then to show bottlenecks. And to show what happened on the African continent with these hominids. And I also mentioned 
the uh, the ocean dispersals with the dinosaurs and the old world monkeys, where evolutionists are saying somehow they left continents at a time that were separated by oceans and made it to the other side and were able to reproduce and procreate. <clears throat> that right there was a big dagger and we, we can have whole conversations. I think these conversations need to go on because what's gonna happen is if I, if I prove how stupid ocean dispersals is, you have to show me how old world monkeys get into the new world and how stuff gets across oceans at certain times when there was nothing, they couldn't swim. All right, so all right. If man was here. If man was here, then man would have did it. And the only place that showed man with that type <coughs> of antiquity on the record from the hands of the people was in the Americas, which is why I was showing those particular documents. All right. Um, let me move on. Let me move on. Uh, when y'all finish, I need y'all to come out because other people trying to get in. Other people trying to get in. Y'all could go in the back and let the people quick, in. Quick question, so right. quick question, brother. Yeah. Um, you remember, we had some uh, questions um, from the debate that some people. Um, yeah, well, they got to get in here. They got to come in. No, they actually, we got them. We got in front of the thing. All right. They they here now? No, we got the actual questions. No, 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 no. Don't so you don't want to. They got to come in, brother. Come on to. Come on to. Come on to. Peace. Can you hear me, brothers? I hear you. What's up, bro? Nice to meet you guys. I'm a big fan. I'm I'm calling in from from South Africa. You in South Africa listening. now? Wow. Yes, wow. sir. You see that? We reaching wow. all over, baby. Go ahead, talk to us, man. What's up, brother? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm young, you know, and I I think we there's a big renaissance happening on the continent. We're tapping into black consciousness and we're trying to learn huh. our history. I think we're a few years behind, but we, we, I'm just I've just been listening. I think the debate is amazing. I think <laughs> In my opinion, I think that Ali proved that they were Aboriginal Black, so-called African people in the Americas at that time. I won't contest that. Why you my say so-called African Americans? Right, because he doesn't believe in the term. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I believe in the term. In fact, I, I disagree with Ali on a few points, but I don't have. A, I know I don't have a lot of time, um, and I've purchased his book as well. So I'll be, I'm really looking forward to reading that book. My question to Brother uh, Ali is, what percentage of Black Americans would you say are Aboriginal and what percentage are connected to the continent? Because I'm not seeing, Good it question. looks like a small Good group, question. a small lineage of them are Aboriginal, but most of them, I think, uh, Jabari proved that hundreds of thousands came on ships to, to the Americas. So that would be my question to Brother Ali, and I have one for Jabari as well, but should I okay, wait for Ali to respond Ali first? Go first? Ali, All right, so, so one of the things that we could deal with with the populations pre-Columbian is to get statistics on, let's say, if we're going to go amongst the Mayan populations at particular times, especially at their classical periods, how many people inhabited that particular space. And the numbers that you're going to get right now are 7 to 11 million. That's just in that area of Mexico. Then we could come later to points where uh, we deal it in the southeast, uh, southeast part of America. But to answer your question about percentages, and see, this is why the conversation has to get extended. When you deal with uh, uh, bottlenecks, you deal with population size going, population sizes going down based on environmental catastrophes, et cetera. The reason why Perry is important is because Perry definitely has what you would call uh, pre-bottleneck DNA. That's the antiquity of it. That's how they would look at it. And so now when you start dealing with percentages, what you would have to be able to calculate is from all of the, let's say the Y chromosome lineages from A all the way to the, the, the ones that go into F and, and the Qs that are Eurasian, et cetera. You would have to quantify amongst the bottleneck populations that happen in any particular point, how how much of those uh, those uh, S and P's that classify you based on a haplogroup haplogroup uh, haplogroup were able to descend now to these other parts? So now, if we come amongst Black people now, we it's difficult for us to do that. We have to deal with archaeo uh, DNA and able to establish that. And in order to do that, we got to go into these places where we have these uh, temples and other places dig all of them up, get as many bodies as we can and do studies and run their genetics to see what percentages come up of A or B or even E, which are the haplogroups that uh, usually match people with our phenotypes. All right. And so right now 
this is a work that we have to do in order to establish those percentages. Now, when you start dealing with genetic testing, right? And let's say you go take a test from 23andMe, right? They're using our current S&Ps that we have to match them to modern African S&Ps. And then they're saying, based on the theory of evolution, that, okay, in order for African-Americans to have these S&Ps, it had to be during the slave trade. One of the reasons why I show high interaction between aboriginals and people on the continent is to show this exchange that was happening before uh, the, you know, the pre-Columbian era. And so now when we look at the African-American population and we say, what's African DNA versus aboriginal American DNA, right? My position is these are the same people that have migrated from different points. And my point of contention was the migration start was here because of the antiquity of the civilizations. What has to be done, like Perry was done, is to prove we have unique genetics that are not on the African continent and can't be found. Or if we have similarity, when did those similarities arise? And so genetic testing is, is, is a great thing, but when it adds in the current concept of evolution into the equation, my position is it's, 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 it's way off because it has, to, it has to introduce the fact that the primary oldest indigenous population in the Americas is us and not Eurasians. And if that's introduced, they will be forced to use our modern genes to do the measurements. And so that's my position on, on, you know, on that particular question. Powerful. <laughs> Ali made that up. <laughs> if I could say something here, if I could say something. Albert Perry was discovered by a, a number of geneticists who were doing some work looking at um, the human genome. And they, they happened to cross a very old lineage that was found in African-Americans. Ali Muhammad didn't find him. None of the Abos found him. There's a scholarly paper on what they found. The, the, the folks in the Aboriginal community would like you to ignore the work of the people that brought this, this topic to light because the paper doesn't say what they're saying. It does not say what they're saying. I showed the paper um, during the debate. I showed this, to, this paper to Shan Jor. Can you please show this? This is the scholarly paper done by Fernando Mendez, Thomas Cron, and Bonnie Scrack. They are the geneticists, right? And they were surprised to actually find that there was this very old DNA from the very beginning. They're telling you it's African-American DNA. They would like you to believe something else, but the people who brought it forward are telling you it's African-American DNA. They try to say that he wasn't enslaved. This is ridiculous. The paper describes it. In fact, as you go down here, very clearly when they actually show you the breakdown of when they believe this DNA must have traced to, they actually say, well, listen, we see very similar DNA in Cameroon amongst the Mbo. This is the scholarly paper. They would like you to believe that they don't find it. Did they find the exact strain? No. But the authors of the paper actually have, by the way, listen, they're even showing you where they believe it must have come from. I mean, they're going to just ignore that. They're showing you a map of Nigeria, Chad, and Cameroon. They just ignore it. They throw it out because it doesn't fit, um, fit their argument. And the authors of, this, of the paper say, this is the reason. They tell you why they believe they find this data in the United States and not where they believe it, or, or, it originated. This is in their scholarly paper. How the, in the world can Ali Muhammad tell you that he's discarding the paper by which we found out about this data because he knows more? How, I mean, this is ridiculous. Listen to what they say. The large sample size of African-Americans was critical for the discovery of the A00 lineage, given its very low frequency estimate in Sub-Saharan Africa. However, even the large consumer-based African-American data set Examined here 
is a highly biased representation of sub-Saharan Africans. They're telling you that this is a representation of sub-Saharan Africans. How do you read the paper about the topic and discard the paper and only take the pieces that you like? That is not scholarship. Let's continue. Because it captures only genetic diversity inherited from ancestors living at a particular time and place, i.e. essentially the West African coastal source area of the Atlantic slave trade, of the Atlantic slave trade, of the Atlantic slave trade. This is the paper which took place during the 15th and 19th centuries. It is likely, this is important here, it is likely that a much richer understanding of the Y chromosome polygeny, uh, po phylogeny, as well as of genetic variant, uh, variation in general would be achieved if more dense and even sampling were to be conducted across Sub-Saharan Africa, especially given its high level of genetic diversity. Right off the bat, they're saying, you know, the reason why we don't think we found the exact strain is because we have relatively few samples in Cameroon amongst the Mbo, but we have a lot of samples among African Americans. You know this, most African Americans who are not Aborigines and most Afro Americans who are not Hebrews are doing DNA testing. A lot of us have done DNA testing now. So they've said we have a richer database of African Americans. That's why we found it. But we expect that if we did more testing in Cameroon, we would find it there because we see something very similar. That is the article. How do you read the scholarly article or not read the scholarly article and come up with your own conclusion without actually doing the research? This is the study of the geneticist that brought it to light. He's supposed to know more than the geneticist that brought it to light? How? How? <laughs> oh, gosh. This is tedious. So this is tedious. Barry, quick question. If, Bar. if I could, uh, quick question. Sorry, sorry brother Unc, yeah. I just had a follow-up question, if you don't mind, because it ties into what Jabari is saying. Because in my view, uh, it, it looks as though even if they are Aboriginal to the Americas, they are not that far distinct genetically from people on the continent. I've heard Brother Ali say that Africa was How settled as a bottleneck possible, and that they. Yeah, that How is that possible? Well, what you well, like I said, ability. that that's not. How is it possible? They're not that far genetically removed from Africans, but they're Aboriginal to the Americas. What you yeah, are saying, well, the, it, it lies the science. Well, well, the question is, how did they get to the Americas, and how did they get to Africa? So I'm like, if I we know the, that already. It's, yeah, that, it's that, that, that the that. article says he's from the transatlantic enslavement trade. You're not reading the article. <laughs> it tells you how we got there. I read it for you. Yeah. Read the article. I'm, this is I'm a scholarly about this specific. Listen, if we're not going to actually look at the sources and review the sources, we're in trouble. Because you can't just come up with whatever you want because you feel it suits you. Look at the data. This is the article by the geneticist. Ali Muhammad is not this a is geneticist. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, Ali, Ali Muhammad went to the plane. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> I run a company, brother, and it's three miles away from me, but I do testing right now, but don't uh, look at me like that. Like, that's a whole other discussion. And I fly a unicorn. But don't talk yeah. about me like that. Bro. Now you're talking okay. about what I do for work and how I make money. Bro. No, 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 no. Like, hold up, right. bro. Relax. Show us no. the Yeah, but don't say stuff out of your mouth when you don't know what you're talking about. Y'all got to I mean, relax. Like, I got the softwares on my computer right now to do testing. Have yes, some testing, bro. That makes them a geneticist. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're not about to do that. I want to. I want to repeat. Yes, man, man. Man. Or have Come a comment. You're a science brother on this platform. No, let me ask you a question, Jamar. Let me ask you a question. Africa finished what he was saying, though. Hold on, Muhammad. Everybody, chill out, Ali. Hey, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa. You got about five no, questions. No, 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 Come stop, on, bro. Stop. stop, stop. No, oh, oh, let me no, ask no, this question. He's from South Africa, no. bro. He's from a whole nother Yo, country. That's what I'm saying. We gotta let this brother finish, y'all. This oh, that's the rule. Where so if you're from England, you get thirty. Come on, man. Everybody watching around the world. The brother from South Africa, he's happy to be oh, on the program, man. and he wants well, to learn. I want you to know, Sonetta, Sonetta, I can't be here that much longer. I'm All just right, that's why we're going to finish. Go ahead, brother. So my final question is, even if the genetics is, is being disputed, what are the lawful 
and practical implications with Black Americans identifying with Africa? What what is what is it? What are the implica- What are the tangible benefits of identifying as African, as opposed to identifying as Aboriginal, setting up your own government, buying your own land and resources? Why should they look to another continent instead of building their own homeland? Who that question for? That's my question. For who? Yeah. That's for Jab- That's for Jabari, Jabari and um. Br- and Ali, if he can answer as well. Yo, y'all got two minutes, man. Two minutes to answer the question. That's I it. Say, I want to say very quickly that it, it's not about whether you want a homeland. Either you have a homeland or you don't. This is a scientific thing. African Americans have lineage from the continent of Africa, and we were taken forcibly away from it. And I think that when you suggest that we're going to set up our own government, that's what Ali is trying to do. I want to say to you, that brother is going to be in a lot of trouble. You don't just set up a government with another government and say, this is ours, and say you're going to issue passports and things like that. That It doesn't work that way. And the reality is, we are the children of Africa. We were taken away forcibly. We didn't choose to leave. And we're connected to the wealthiest most um, uh, impressive landmass in terms of its contributions to civilization. Now, does that mean that we have to all leave here? No, I'm not. We're not selling our house in Harlem to to live in Africa permanently because today that's a that's an old model. The reality is that populations of people live in lots of different places. There are Chinese Americans that are killing it all over the United States. There are, there are Nigerian Americans that are killing it in the United States. They're not planning on going home. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have to develop relationships with the continent from which we were taken. That's what we're talking about. I'm not saying that I'm coming to take your house, brother, in South Africa. But I am saying that we have to develop relationships across the waters that um, allow us to reconnect with our homeland and allow us together as a global African population to All move right. together. All right, Tom. You got two minutes. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second because I want to make sure I share my screen when I go. So hold up. I want you to uh, You skipped me like three times. Hey, brother, right? Jabari, if you want to leave, you can go, brother, because I know you got to do something, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 10 more minutes. All right. All right, so let me go back to my screen and I'm going to answer this question uh, from the brother uh, about the applicability. So now at the beginning of this debate, I showed you Mayor Ansar El Muhammad, who is the uh, mayor of Sun Village. Sun Village is a unique city because it is a tribal township that that council is managing. I'm a resident of, of Sun Village. And so now here is where we enter the law conversation that all these people are going to just pass out because not only do I run native labs, which is, which is a genetic company that I run where I do haplogroup testing. I even do parental testing with the courts and I have the contracts. This, this, I don't know why this makes people uneasy. I stopped coming on side netter when I got, to this genetic conversation back in 2017 when I left Jabari, because I said, I'm gonna get specialization in genetics. I got all the equipment in my office. I've been showing it online. Y'all been seeing it if y'all on my IG page and on these pages. So you're not gonna disqualify me in a conversation of, of, of genetics when I know, bruh, if you put us in here in six hours in genetics, I will blow your bald head off of the internet, bruh. Like, you are not about to come at me like that. So, to the point of what's practical about the conversation, here is here is the curveball. The curveball is the conversation that I'm having about <laughs> Aboriginal in America is the same conversation Africans need to have to get the Europeans off their ass because they're indigenous to Africa too. This is a global movement of indigenous peoples all over the planet, fixing the language, fixing the history, fixing the knowledge. So when we enter politics, we can enter politics right. Uh, identity is based on is based on self-identity. I got enough proof for my genealogy and everything that I'm indigenous to this land. And we've been working that program. Anybody making no damn passports? We do make things, but we use the passports of the United States because they have embassies. Arna don't have no embassy in another country. I'm not, we're not irresponsible. We're not gonna be giving our people passports 
and they, we can't go to another country to go save them. But we started small. There are two types of governments on this land, the United States and what? Tribal governments, indigenous governments. Don't tell me we can't. He's going to get in trouble. I ain't going to get in trouble. I've been doing this since 2006. I ain't paid taxes since 1998. I can say that out loud because I don't have no contracts because whatever I make in my indigenous jurisdiction goes in my pocket, bro. All of it. And I got receipts. So the political side is Africa needs an indigenous movement. They need to get rid of the name, get an indigenous movement in each one of the states to get the yoke of colonization off of them. And we need to do the same thing here. And anywhere else we had colonization. And it's a gradual thing. It's culture, it's politics, it's economics. It's a whole plan. But that's what I contribute to the conversation when it comes to this side is if you're in Jamaica, you need an indigenous movement. If you're in South Carolina, you need to be part of the indigenous movement. The politics, the, uh, the education, the institutions, Native Labs is what we own. We own it. I bought all the material, the machines, Everything myself, PCR machines, jail electrophoresis machines. You don't even know what these are, bro. I'm in a lab, bro. And I've been showing people for years since I got off of Sinetta. So my point to you is you are throwing insults and you look stupid. You can disagree with me, but when you start insulting me, you look crazy, bro. We have a whole city in California. We fought with Los Angeles County and they sat down and said, you know what? Y'all do have that right. We're going to chill. And my brother right now is the mayor. The whole council is people from our tribe. They voted. They had a vote in the city, bro. Like this is not no fake shit. Sovereign citizenship. We're trying to teach our people about UCC codes and crazy shit that you see on YouTube, bro. We are grown, responsible people trying to build institutions that are indigenous, and we're doing it, bro. Like, and that's no shade to anybody on the. Af I love my brothers and sisters on the African continent. We are close in genetics because we're the only ones here. I don't believe in the hominin theory, and I can talk about that I later. See. But all I I'm see. saying is this is all Yo, about crazy. the vocal rise of our people. And we gonna disagree on points, but bro, don't be hurling insults at me, cause I'm not gonna do that to you. How did I insult you? You insulted me because I've been on Sinetter, and the first time I did a lecture, I said I I mentioned it, and you came on that show. I mentioned. Wait, 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 let me finish. I'm answering your question. So you insulted me. You keep saying it, and I said in the debate, twice, "What is the it? <laughs> I run the lab." You are saying, no, you're not a geneticist. Bruh, I deal with genetics on a daily basis. That's why I can show you the SMPs. You don't even know where that is. All right, y'all. Right, All right. Yeah. Time out. Yeah. We're going hey, right back. Whoa, whoa. I saw you skipped over. I had that quick. I, I, I actually wanted to ask the bar. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Let me get the people first, brothers. You, you come on. No, nah, it's about the genetics real quick, yo. You can't let all wild information fly that quick. No, nah, bro. Let what? me get these. Okay, all right. I'm done. Let me. Yeah, I'll holler y'all later. I'll, I got you, Jabari. I see you. I appreciate you, Muhammad. Appreciate y'all brothers, man. We'll get you this eight double zero. It's all good, man. I'm out, man. Peace. I'm trying to end the show, man. Huh? MBB. I'm trying to end the show. I want to get all right, you. man. That's all right. It. It's all good. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, MBB. So I got two questions. I got a question for Jabari and uh, Ali. So, uh, Jabari. Um, I understand your stance, but I'm trying to understand, um, do you just dismiss all theories of um, geographical um, changes? And why is it that you didn't give us like a, maybe a connection from Africa to the Americas earlier before the transatlantic Atlantic slave trade? What do you mean? I, I'm, I'm not even sure if I understand your question. Do I dismiss? What do, you, do, I, do you dismiss? Do you dismiss theories on the land masses changing? Do you dismiss? Are you, all are, you, are you saying? Do I believe that the Earth looks exactly that it, it, it's always looked the same way as it does today? No, yeah. I think the science tells us that the Earth has shifted um, and had some major shifts, but. Every reputable scientist argues that those shifts occurred before human beings were on the planet. Um, and so that that is extremely important um, for you to understand. And I want you to know, listen, 
I, I, I'm not trying to insult our brother Ali Muhammad. I'm not. I'm not. But when I'm say, what I am saying is there are people who have actually done ex, a, a, a large amount of study and have received degrees. And when they receive those degrees, they are called by certain titles. And so when I say, are you a geneticist? And he refuses to show me a degree. That says to me, something's fishy. Now, I'm not questioning whether you have equipment or things on your computer. I'm saying, what makes you a geneticist? No, I'm asking about, I'm asking about. I'm answering both questions, brother. And, and, the, and the reality is, you are. It, it's so bizarre to me that right now, you are trying to say, should I explain how Africans got here? The reality is everyone in the chat room knows how we got here. The, the folks that need to prove something are the people that are making an extraordinary claim, saying that we didn't travel anywhere. By the way, I showed you that we found ships. I talked to you. I showed you the, the, at the bills for sale in the debate that say that we know how that Europeans were selling Africans. And I also, wait a minute. And I also, during the debate, showed you the words of Africans who said that they had come from Africa. So I did do that. And no, that I and I should not have to. The reality is, y'all know how we got here. You can you can believe all kinds of bizarre stories you want. I'm not disputing anything that you prove. What I'm asking you is, yo 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 yo, move on with the question, brother. We ain't got time to go back and okay, forth. Well, I'm gonna just ask Ali the question. Ali, thank you, brother. Um, okay, so you <laughs> you um you you showed um some scientific research on sulfur and how the volcanoes erupted and how that came about. You you get where I'm going mm -hmm. as far as what you showed? Okay. And before this uh, debate, you also talked about um, moo. Right. right? Okay. So I'm trying to understand, is there a connection between those two things? Because I found a JSTOR article of this inscription of moo in Iraq. So I'm trying to see if there's a connection between a ruck, a ruck. Can you spell that and tell me what you mean by a ruck? Basically in Iran, um, or right under Nepur, right? It would be in. Like, oh, okay, 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 okay. So they found that inscription of Mu there, but I'm trying to see is there a connection between that and the volcano eruption in the sulfur that you're talking about, which okay, so is the skin colors. Okay, so the only reason I showed the volcano is one isolated event that happened on the planet, but there were multiple ones. And this is what you call, when you start looking at the geologic record, uh, things that could cause uh, minor extinctions or mass extinctions, okay? There have been five mass extinctions on the geological record, and there have been nine magnetic, uh, uh, magnetic anomalies, or what you would call pole shifts. All right. And I sourced that in the book. I sourced both of them. The reason why I mentioned Mu is because Mu was a word that Augustus Laplungeon named for the eighth continent. Now, Augustus Laplungeon was kind of pseudo, but he was also an archaeologist. But he was talking about this and he was saying that he he read in the Mayan records about this Mu. Now, the Mayan records are not the one that have them. It was the Ica stones that they keep talking about. That, that mentioned this continent in the Pacific and it sunk. And now people, now geologists have found that continent. I don't know any connections it might have to anything in Iran. And I, you know, I don't know anything, but the reason why I mentioned it is to talk about bottlenecks and catastrophes because that continent that's mentioned uh, uh, that they're talking about in the Pacific is connected to these bottleneck events and mass extinctions that have happened in different places. This is connected to even ice ages and why uh, you know things happen on the planet. So my point was to introduce bottlenecks as a discussion for people who begin to study genetics and try to un understand the migration patterns that could possibly exist outside of the Af out of Africa theory. Because now when you introduce that, you're gonna have another discussion. Now, the last thing is, that Jabari said that when these plates were moving around, there were no humans. That was my argument. That's why I mentioned the ocean dispersals 
and to say evolutionists are telling us dinosaurs who didn't swim swam across oceans and monkeys uh, on the ocean dispersal must have been on some vegetation or tree logs and went across whole oceans. No, bro. There were people here when these plant, these things were moving around. And the Americans is having that conversation in primary documents that come from our records as far as time sequence, which I showed the calendars, how old they said, they said things were in the Mayan calendar. I, I gave the sources on that. And then the Eco, the Eco Stones had a calendar that matched the Paris Codex. Did, did he make that up too? Did, did, did this, this little ignorant uh, person who's carving stones go study the Paris Codex, which misses the Manziel calendar, 28 day increments, uh, 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 28 day increments in 13 periods that match the ones that were found in the Eco Stones? Did, they, did he make that up too? No. This is a civilization that was aware of bottlenecks and they wrote about bottlenecks. They're the only ones to write about them. And the reason why is because of their location. They were safe from them. So the, the sulfur aerosols and other stuff that I mentioned were a part of a larger argument about where people came from. Hominids leading to homo sapien or white people and all those things. It's a lot to talk about, bro. And I, this is why I wrote a book. I wrote a book so that I could detail these things so we could continue to study. We're going to leave here disagreeing. I mean, and that's fine. But guess what? Everybody here has the potential to keep studying what we said to see what was real and what was not. Jabari will not, last point, Jabari did not answer your question. He didn't. Definitely. He didn't. I'm he sorry. just, he Jabari, just, I, understand, Jabari. I he had just, you in this, I had you winning. I promise hold you. On, hold on, hold on, Let me say something. No, let me say something. You asked him a question about pre slavery and he avoided it intentionally. And that is the rhetoric that I'm talking about. The rhetoric is uh, as soon as you push them up in a corner where they have to add, answer things based on what I show primary sources for, they two step. They two step. So, you know, it. the thing the thing that's difficult is this: the question that he asked was poorly asked, and I asked through him to ask it again. And you are going to do all of that now because you lost. And now you're trying to throw bro, off an after party. Bro. Listen, brother, we asked a poll when, when folks were in for the debate. There were more people that were there to see you than to bro, see this you. Is a, this is a pan-African platform, bro. What are right, you talking right, about, right, bro? This is a pan-African platform, Stop, stop. stop. We moving on to the next question, y'all. I mean, I'm Jabari, mean, you, you got to leave. You got to leave, Jabari. I don't want to hold you up. Oh, bro. Jabari, leave. leave. You are a liar. Let me yeah. go. Hold on. Hold you on. are a liar. No, Sinead, liar. you got the floor. I'm a liar. No, you, you are a liar, bro. I'm a liar, bro. Well, brother Jabari, you have to leave soon. So I wanted to ask you first. And I think one reason why you definitively won is because of we tie ourselves and our identity to slavery because we feel like we wouldn't be having this conversation of who we are if it had not been for slavery, even if we don't believe all the dynamics of the slave trade. So you giving the first account showing the Africans and them saying themselves are African, I think was the most powerful in the debate. But I have a question, because you say that you understand the First Nations people were enslaved as well. And there's been times where you say that we're both. So how can we make a blanket statement that all black Americans are more African than they are First Nations people without them going within their family to know which one they are? That's a good question, but I'm not saying that all Africans are more African than First Nation. That's not what I'm saying at all. There are people who have mixed parentage. I've said that several times. Um, the number is smaller when we look at the DNA studies. The number is smaller than we think. Very often what ends up happening is we see features and we say, well, grandma must be Native, Native American. And we do the DNA studies. We usually see European DNA. That is painful. And I'm going to tell you that the Tom who has to be held account for what they did to us. Pretending it didn't happen does not hold them accountable. And that is what some folks are doing. They're pretending it didn't happen. We need to hold them accountable. And the other part of the, it is this. We know that Native Americans were enslaved uh, at a much smaller number than the African, right? 
But the enslavement of the of the Native American be, in the West began began before the enslavement of the African in the West. Right? That's the historical narrative. I I explained it in the debate when I talked about Father Bartolomé de las Casas. There, I'm, I'm not confused about that. But I think that what we have to do is recognize that the overwhelming majority of those people who we consider Black, African, African Americans today, the overwhelming majority of us do not have Native parentage. The overwhelming majority of us do not have Native parentage. And there are some of us that do have made Native parentage. That's a smaller number. And then there are even, you know, the Aboriginals never even discuss this. There are even those people who don't have Native American parentage that are part of Native American communities. Why? Because those Native American communities also enslaved African people. Why is it that everyone in the Aboriginal community never represents the fact that perhaps you're there because you were enslaved? This, this, this is a, a, a real pipe dream. And I think that in order for us to resolve this, we have to acknowledge what happened. And there's some folks who are misrepresenting it. And I hate to say Ali has all kinds of spicy language for me now, right? I never called him a liar. I never called him a liar. Um, he has all kinds of spicy language now because he's trying to show out. But the reality is that um, in order for us to be a powerfully goal of a global people, we're going to have to do something a little different. Um, and connecting ourselves to Africa is one of those important things. Um, that we have to do. That doesn't mean we have to leave here. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a chief in Ghana. My wife and I have built a house in Ghana. We're not planning on leaving to go there permanently, right? We're planning on connecting the global African community. There are probably somewhere between 1, 1 billion and 1.5 billion Africans worldwide, as many as there are Chinese or, or Indians. If we were unified, no one, do you hear what I'm saying? No one could stand in our way. We're located in all of the centers of power in the world. That's what we need to do. And so that, that is truly what I think is a strategy for our success. And believe it or not, if Ali is correct about creating an autonomous city, then wonderful. I wish that he would create it on a proper historical record. There's a long history of Black autonomous cities. I could list over 60. It's not new. There are Black autonomous cities that exist right now, right now, that we have completely ignored. I want you all, if you're not familiar with this, go look at Nicodemus, Kansas. Nicodemus. We even had cities like Mount Bayou where they didn't even want white people to come in. The pictures of, of the Black folks in that city who were taken by white photographers, they look like this. What you doing here? <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have a long history of building for ourselves. If Ali is able to do that, more power to him. I just wish that we were going to build it on a more historical basis. With that, let me say to you, family, whether you agree with me or not, I'm still fighting for you. Whether you agree with me or not, the reality is that I believe that African people worldwide must unite. And that All means right. that we have to unite where we are and also with the continent. Thank you, Brother Jabari. Thank right. you. And I know, Dr. Ali, you definitely are, are going to answer a lot of what he was saying or addressing what he said. But I had a question to you to add because you definitively showed the Omex and Mayans are connect, connected and Negro people. But can you c connect them as far as to the slave trade and show them the majority of them were in North America's and the Americas and they lost their identity through slavery? Or did they lose their identity through war? How did they... How do we not know that we're those people now? Oh, yeah, that's easy. Now, one of the things that I did when we were talking, the reason why I pointed out the embassy in South Carolina, and I used the congressional record to say that the embassy or Negroes, that when they made that, that statement, they didn't say the embassies were Negroes because they took Negroes in and they enslaved them. That was a blanket statement in 1914 with enough time to look at all the things to say that, you know, uh, the embassy were Negroes. And so I also pointed out that in 1712, uh, the South Carolina anthropologists in that study went through and from 1670 to 1712, they said 
51,000 of these, these were people were enslaved. Now I want you to pay. Now this is in Charleston, an uh, Indian slave trade. So what I'm trying to say to Jabari is I'm not Dane Calloway. I never said that the slave trade didn't happen. I didn't say that, that you never got that from me. Right. I do make sure I go. But if you have the embassy who they said were Negroes, and they're in this vicinity right now where I'm at. I'm in Georgia right now, right? I grew up in South Carolina. That means that they had the phenotype of Negroes and they were being, they were indigenous and they were being enslaved in Charleston. So now you got Africans being mixed with natives, being mixed with, you see what I'm saying? I'm bringing all of these tentacles together because historians usually don't bring them together. They just, a uh, harper on one side that some of our ancestors from Africa were enslaved. I'm not against Africa, Africa at all. I want Africa to rise, but I want Africa to rise from in its indigenous mind, not in its European mind. I'm talking about all of the states, sub-Saharan, whatever. Let them rise that way. And so, because we have these uh, Negroes, I even showed the Powhatan in Virginia having the same name as the Mayan gods. This is 1600. Those gods are written down thousands of years before that. How did they, how did that, this is because there's a whole culture here we're not studying. So my position was to get y'all to see that you need to study this information. These people were considered Negroes over and over again with different descriptions. They didn't say the Yamasid Negroes had slanted eyes and were Orientals. They didn't say that about all of them. If they said that about one group of them, Okay, but my point is there's a whole Negro civilization here. And so when, when, when they started enslaving us, they didn't say, oh, you, you a Negro from America, you a Negro from Africa. No, they said all y'all Negroes, as a matter of fact, since some of y'all are from here, because Jabari talked about black cities. See, I'm not just talking about black cities. I'm talking about cities that are indigenous, that have their own jurisdiction, which is different which is why I don't have to pay taxes. I can work from that city or in my jurisdiction in all of my exchanges and have zero problems with the IRS. I never had a problem with the IRS. I haven't paid taxes since 1998. I'm 48 years old, bro. I, we, we know what we're doing here. When we do have to pay taxes, I go and I pay myself a salary if I got to do real estate to get a property or something like that and I got to show tax returns. I can say this on the show. That's not illegal. I can get one of my companies to pay me as, as an employer and he used that to file taxes on to get a tax receipt to go do real estate and nothing that I did was illegal. So all I'm saying is Jabari, when it comes to the law side, he doesn't, he doesn't understand why we're saying what we're saying. So now we all been mixed up. Should we got some white in us? We got some Aboriginal, however long that's go. We got some African in us now and we got all these things, but we're still Earth's first homo sapiens, if you want to call us that, you know. And so all I'm saying is we need to study that. I'm just asking people to study more than the general narrative. And the general narrative is y'all came over here as slaves and that's it. That's not history, bro. That's somebody social engineering your mind to think one way. And it's very, very tricky. And so I'm just trying to get people to expand their minds, open up their studies, we're not hating on Africa like some of these Indian, black Indians be doing. Like, I don't do that. You know what I mean? I'm a world traveler. I All understand. right. All right. Let's move on. I got uh, Pianke. What up, brother? You want to talk about the debate? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First of all, congratulations to, to you, sir, Thanks, to man. Jabari, to Dr. Ali, uh, everybody involved. Brother Domo, it was a, a excellent, excellent debate. Uh, no, no ad homs, just straight professionals, straight down the line. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, I had Jabari winning, but I want to ask uh, uh, Dr. Ali. Uh, he said he had a lab, and you just you kind of just answered it because you said we all mixed up. But I wanted to ask you when, like, when you do your your own uh, DNA, how do you go about with like when you get the results? do you have African DNA and, and how do you go about determining where, like who you are, where you came from, et cetera, based on your DNA, if you have 
African and all of these other things within that, whatever that mixture is. All right. So, okay. So here's the thing. Like, you know, I'm, I'm in an A group, but I'm A1B. And so now when I do, when I do the test, this, this is what I'm bringing up. The test is based on this. If you get a snip that matches somebody in Mali or Senegal, because my, my, my haplogroup group will show up more mainly in Senegal, right? If you get a SNP, they will automatically say on their testing that this means that you're African. What I'm saying is if we had a whole population of Aboriginal people for here thousands of years, this is one thing, and they didn't say they came from somewhere. Now we got an evolutionary question we got to deal with Mm -hmm. further, further, further back. But when I'm doing the testing and I know that these groups are already here, do I class now based on my paradigm of knowing that people are here and I'm not just basing on the slave trade because that's what the geneticists are doing. They, they said that Albert Perry was a slave, not because they pulled up documents. Those geneticists didn't say, oh, we, we got his genealogy. We know where his family from. They came on the ship or from. This is an inference. They're doing genetic study. The genetics is the science, the inference of him coming here. So my point to, to y'all is if we had aboriginals here, for thousands and thousands of years. And I know that they had to have haplogroups. How do we make their haplogroups up? We got to do a few things. We, we, that's why we got to work. We got to do archaeogenetic testing, which is very difficult to do. I don't even know how to do archaeogenetic testing. That's different than doing in vivo testing from somebody alive. That's taking a bone and going through a very tedious process to make sure you can capture that DNA and then capturing that DNA in a pure enough form to look at the sequences, right? So now we have, we as a, my point is we as a people have a whole bunch of work to do. But the reason why I will say that I can still say I'm Aboriginal American because A haplogroups are pre bottleneck DNA. This is why they show up here. And one of the things I showed that was that Albert Perry was not born in South Carolina. This is important. He was born in 1819 in Florida, which was only two territories in Florida, the Spanish and the Indian territories. I showed the documents in the book. I can bring it back up again. So all I'm saying is there are a lot of questions that I have about these things, but I'm being fair. I'm acknowledging that there was an indigenous population here. So when I pull up these genetics that I'm pulling up, especially the pre bottleneck ones, I can say possibly that if you in the A group and you in Americas, it's possible that you have a line that was never African, but that line is close, like you said, to the oldest Africans because these uh, the common ancestor would go back far, like way far. Pre. So this is a whole thing where we got to build institution. We got a lot of work to do, man. And I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to be just and 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 not just say, oh, we all got here as a result of the slave trade with all this evidence. I can't do that. That's not that's not science, you know. So hopefully I tried to answer your question as best I could. No, you 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 was you you definitely answered it. And my, my second question is this, and then I'm a, I'm gonna jump off and let y'all rock and the Queens can answer this question too. Uh Franz Fanon had because I see a lot of people with some people saying they're Hebrews or some people saying they abos, and then obviously, like myself people saying that they they African. So it seemed to be a lot of confusion within our community. And I don't see this in other uh, ethnic communities. It seemed like we the only we the only people who 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 have multiple uh, claims of, of identity. And France for nine had uh, had this saying where he said that it was um, something called an existential deviation, where as a result of the removal of language and culture of, of origin, the black individual and the black collective have had to simultaneously define and redefine identity, culture and existence. And I feel like that may have something to do with us cl- claiming all of these different identities. I just wanted to get y'all, y'all opinion on that. And then I'm gonna I'm jump off and, and listen to what y'all gotta say. Peace, peace to the panel and a peace to, to the King Sarnetta. And, and again, Dr. Ali, you had a great debate, great event. Appreciate everybody. Yes, sir. Peace, CMJ. Uh, I'll just jump on the first and be real quick and I'll let the sisters go. 
This is the reason why we said global indigenous paradigm. See, like I said, I have to separate myself from the Dane Calloways and those people. I am, I'm in no way am I anti the indigenous people of the continent of Africa. But what I am proposing is when it comes to identity, that all of us have some type of indigenous movements that can make us strong where we are. And then when we start inter linking internationally, we kind of have the same value system. The value system is, okay, we know we had a colonizer. We know we had traditions before that colonizer in all of these places. Let's make them strong where they are and, and then start our connections, trade, education, etc. It's really no argument. What we're saying is we're the original people of this planet. And wherever we are, we need to work as indigenous peoples with international law available and a whole bunch of things available to give us a space to work together. So my point to Jabari was to open up another side of black history, really. I wasn't combating the fact that Africans came here. He kept showing that, but you're not understanding. I'm not combating that. I'm combating this other history of black people who were here to establish a line that goes all the way into how we can politically move. And so that was my view. The whole global indigenous movement is my paradigm. I love people on the continent who are indigenous. I love my family who is are the real indigenous people. And so I think we can move from there. I know the sisters, they wanted the sisters to comment too. So, I, it doesn't matter. so if you could be Hebrew, I don't matter if you're Hebrew, stay Hebrew, but be indigenous. It don't matter if you're more. Stay more and be indigenous. Okay, freedom is on you. So yeah, go ahead, go ahead, freedom. Let me. Break. Okay, well, really, I just wanted to answer. I'm um, to ask you a question. Um, I know you just answered what DMG said. Unless Delsonay has something that she wanted to add to that, did you? Okay, all right. Well, first of all, this was a very good, very good debate. Okay, um. I don't think you would even waste your time with the person that I've known you for like 15 years now. I don't think that you would even waste your time going through all of this if it if it wasn't some type of historical information that came to you that you would actually just go for this. I don't know why there's such a problem with the fact that people were already on these lands. Now, my question is this. Do you think that because they did bring people over here and there were people here, because we also do, we can't just say our family is lying. You know what I'm saying? So once we started mixing in, because DNA is Johnny come lately. It's not like they've always been doing DNA. We act like they've been doing DNA for the same thousands of years. But now that they have this DNA thing and we've been mixed in, you see what I'm saying? And they really didn't have a, I guess, a name for the Aboriginal people, the Indian people. And, you know, because there's so many different sects, because we know that even in Africa, there's different tribes that don't look anything alike. OK, so when they finally started doing the DNA, of course, Africa is going to come up somehow in your DNA. Do you think that that's possible? Right. So now here, here's why I keep going back, circle back to what I call bottleneck DNA. The oldest lineages that they find in America, this is my, my I don't have to say it's a presumption because it already happened. The mm -hmm. oldest lineages in America are, go, you're, go, you're naturally going to find the oldest lineages in Africa because those are what you call pre-bottleneck DNA. Pre-bottleneck DNA was is, is DNA that existed at a time before cataclysms that could have separated people. All right. So my contention is the problem for, for, for evolutionists is because I'm saying that in these antiquitous times, you had dinosaurs and all these other people that we was already here. That's Are where, they're, fighting. That's where they're, they're fighting me on that to say, uh, no, nah, there's no humans here. There were no humans with dinosaurs. So I start gradually bringing the points of contention because it will show why you have ancient American DNA that could possibly match African DNA. Because you had a, a group of people who had didn't have all of these different haplogroups. The haplogroups are very similar because you didn't have breakoffs. And, and here's the thing. And I have to say this, I hope y'all catch this. You have S and P's and you have mutations. And sometimes they try to merge them together. And let me tell you why. S and P's deal with a variant on a gene. 
right? And just to go even deep, you can make S and P's that your parents don't have as an adjustment factor, mm-hmm. and then you have S and P's that you could, you know, charge to the people. But my point is, S and P's on pre bottleneck DNA, mainly groups A and B, and they say, okay, some people left Africa, and then the haplogroups groups started changing. Some of these are mutations as a verse to uh, as 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 opposed to uh, genetic diversity. This is a very deep conversation. I, I got to try to walk myself in. A mutation is different than an S and P that deals with uh, genetic diversity, right? And so now, when you're walking into the conversation again, you you have to you have to Perry's DNA is not African. It's not Af- the reason why it's not African right now in science is because they haven't found it. Let me ask you another question, um, Dr. Ali. When I'm anywhere, I, I mean, I can tell the difference between us and Africans or us and Jamaicans or us. and You know what I mean? Like I could tell di- the difference um, because we are now intertwined. Right. Would that make that much of a difference? Because <laughs> I, I mean, I could be somewhere and just notice that they are African. Right, right. In their tone, their bone structure, and everything that's different than ours. You know what I mean? And then so I'm wondering with the mixture, would it have made that much of a difference? So here, so here's the thing. Here, here's what you got to go into, right? So now, if you say you have differences between some Africans, I can still show you some Africans who look like just like you. Okay. Right. Well, no. I'm, no. I can, I'm gonna tell you why though. That does. That does it. Now here's the thing. Here's the deep part. Here's the deep part. That doesn't mean that your lineage is from Africa. That just means that y'all have common ancestors. Now, this okay. Is really, and the reason why I'm saying this in the way that I'm saying it is because our minds are 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 warped by social engineering, and we gotta pull if we, do our best to put all of that out. Relect. Look at all the facts again. Then we'll see why we have differences from some Africans and why we look like some Africans and why some of them look like us and some why they don't look like us. That's variation. Now that goes into, again, this pre-bottleneck and all the rest of it because now we have carbon, right? Which is the most intelligent atom on the planet. Carbon is what gives our genes the diversity that it does. And so this is... This is a deep conversation. I'm going to tell you, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm break it down real easy. You have four nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. These two over here are the high carbon. These two over here are the high nitrogen. These two over here is what give Africans, adenine and guanine, their high genetic diversity, and it's because of the carbon polymers. The carbon polymers first they bond to more atomic uh, st- other atoms than any other structure, carbon, uh, silicone, geranium. But carbon uh, as an atom is stronger than those because it's binding is on the second or- orbital. Silicone is like four or- orbitals out, so it's not as strong as carbon. So carbon is more uh, diverse and stronger than those, which is why nature chose carbon to be a part of plant life, human life, et cetera. We have the most carbon. It's making our genes the most diverse. But that comes from this pre-bottleneck DNA that existed amongst us and is descended down. So what I'm trying to say to you is that when we start getting into genetics and we all mix together, you got to understand, we mix together and that's what happened to our genes. Don't you know right now that you could do things to build more S&Ps in your body? Literally, like say if you uh, if you go on a fruit fast for 30 days, but you keep enough fruit so you don't lose enough weight, whatever. What's going to happen is your carbon ratios are going to go up. If you do that over a, 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 a 10 year period in 30 and I, genet- I test you genetically, what you're going to find is that some of those S&Ps switch based on diet mm-hmm. and concentrations of carbon. There's other things in the environment. Atrazine is in the water, right? That is a chemical that causes our testosterone to turn into estrogens. That's a negative way to affect your S&P over a long period of time. 
So you have positive ways that you can affect genes and negative ways that you would affect genes. And a thousand years from now, there'll be people who are direct descendants of us that have different SPs than us because of whatever they did with their environment, how well they took care of it, or how well they didn't take care of it. So why are people need to look at genes in a different way? We have the static view of genes that they stay the same. And this has to come into the conversation because now that we all mixed together, right? We, we all mix, meaning different groups have mixed together, whatever. We still have the primary eumelanin <laughs> and the genetics that keeps our diversity. One, that's important. So the mixing is not to our detriment. Now, this might get kind of shaky. When black people mix with white people, that carbon level drops. And the bot and the because I had this conversation with Uncle. I said I want to debate on them. Are dark skinned people biologically more advanced and more intelligent than pale people? And my answer is yes, just based on carbon. I can argue with you all day on carbon, what carbon does to genes, what carbon does in the body of uh, the five melanocortin receptor. Like it's not even an argument. That doesn't mean we're intellectually more intelligent because we can decide to be, but our bodies are more advanced. And so all I'm saying is that mixing, if I go mix it with, uh, I, I give you an example. Uh, my ex-wife is Jamaican, dark-skinned Jamaican. We have two daughters. I'm from North America. She's from Jamaica. Those genes, when they mixed, that was a healthy mix. Yeah, same with me. With my I was me. And so we're looking at it, uh, we're looking at it uh, from, from certain lenses where we got to throw away those lenses and get into the conversation in a very deep way. It's go, this is going to be a long conversation. I can't even answer all your questions on this, but I think that the mixing is not a problem. When yeah, it's yeah, Sister Freedom, you got a bumper clog too, huh? Now say <laughs> that's, that's only a joke. <laughs> oh man, Ali got a bumper <laughs> clog. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, may I ask a question about the DNA before I go? Because they always uh, tell us the E1B1A, and they say that's connected to the Egyptians, that's connected to the Hebrews. Are we? considered E1B1A or is that something they just group us into? Uh, if you have e E1B1A, you have certain uh, SNPs as single nucleotide polymorphisms that match other people on the planet with that particular, uh, you know, gene pool. And that is considered, uh, uh, you know, they'll consider it an African gene pool. Okay. Uh, so what, when they do more testing amongst African-Americans, they're going to find some of us have E, some of us have uh, most likely B, some of us will have A, all right? Um, and so when you have these gene pools, you have SNPs. But I have to say this over and over again. You can delete SNPs over time. You can uh, create new SNPs based on plants that you take. You, I mean, you can do these things. So E1B1A, B1, A, even A haplogroups, these are static haplogroups. They, are, they can change. Based on mutations, they can they can alter it. We already got the evidence of it. That's how we got all these 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 uh, different haplogroups, even the L's and the M's amongst the women. And so these changes are not the basis of how uh, uh, things should be measured over longer periods. That's all I can say. It's it's just going it's going to happen over time. That we're going to see when we start getting into genetics deep, we're going to see what what is missing. From, from the conversation that needs to be had to normal people who might not be in a lab. Because now, what you're going to say, if you say you're a E1B1A now, right, you can, uh, you can do things to your genome and your family line over the next 500 years, right? And I'm telling you, what you could do is you can have sons and daughters that are in, in possibly in A. And the reason, the, the, the difference, I'll give you an example. The difference between a and E1B1, uh, E1B1A are just certain SNPs that are on the uh, Y chromosome, and those can be changed around. They did change. That's how you got E1B1A posterior All right. All right. A groups. All so, right. Thank you, Dr. Ali. I want everybody to let Apostle, the chief Apostle, know what he missed today, y'all. Everybody let chief Apostle know what he did. The general... Cheap apostle. 
Here you go. He in here. Peace, God. Peace, where you at? Where you at, um, brother La? Brother La, let him know what he missed today. You missed a good. You missed a good. Um, a good, very good debate. And you know, you you know that you have um Native American in your family, that's and you also. Been there. So that's why you should have been, and especially since I never gave you the name the general, yeah, right. you should not have been. Yeah, uh, Ali just mentioned the Yamasee. That's, do that, that's the reason why I came on. I just heard Ali mention Yamasee, which is 20 minutes away from me, where I am right now. I have family there in Yamasee. I knew he was uh, I would say there are a lot of Nietzsche in Yamasee, as well as other cities, which in are in South Carolina, including Hilton Head, Bluffton, anywhere around water, uh, Santee, uh, uh, even um, uh, the the um, Savannah River that separates Savannah and uh, South Carolina. Uh, you're going to have that as well as down uh, near St. Augustine, Florida. A lot of Nietzsche. And I'm sure Ali understand what I'm saying when I say Nietzsche. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, rather in North Carolina, uh, because you know, to all Nietzsche, this is Turtle Island. This is not United States. This is Turtle Island. And yeah, my grandmother in 1884 had to register as one of the five tribes, recognized tribes in America. She had to go register. She was living in 1884, and she had to register as a Cherokee, but which was more so, really, my son right now carries an uh, Akuso ID, driver's license. He's tax exempt right now. He had, he don't carry a driver's license anymore. He carries the Kuso Nation. All right. Because Tell him bring his little monkey ass up here. And see nah, he ain't gonna do that with that because he him know who he is, and he ain't coming up here to argue with no Negro about who he is. Do you ain't gonna do that, man? No, I'm telling you, he ain't gonna do that. He's beyond that. I'm telling you, keep it real, yo, Ali. Do you remember when they caught Hakeem Bay? Hakeem Bay is a moor. And he tried to use that same thing. Yeah, and they because he, because, because they doing and it That's wrong. the problem. And he was doing it as a moor. And right. he called me to come get his stuff from the precinct. <laughs> you called right. me. You're right. Eileen Bay. You're right. Ha Hakeem, I mean. Hakeem Bay. I know yeah. Hakeem Bay. Yep. He should have yeah. been, been doing it as a moor. Yeah, right. he did it as a moor. Right. Right. There's only two exactly. governments here. The United States of America and all the indigenous governments. Yeah. And they have okay. a right to carry driver's license and all that. We didn't already went through that. So we got all okay. right. You might get away with it. Um, in your car, you sovereign. That's your that's that's your property. No, yeah, bro, that's, well, that's where I disagree at. Huh? That's where I disagree at. See, that's when people start using that sovereign citizenship. Yeah, that don't work yeah. over here. So now bro. let me tell you, let me tell you the appropriate way to do it, the lawful way to do it. If you have a car. You got two options for insurance, regular insurance or self-insurance. If you get self-insurance with the state, tribes get self-insurance with the state because when they get place issued, when they run the place, the place comes back to the tribe. Right. The, tribe play, the tribes pay on a bond every uh, uh, every three months. And so now they can get place from the state and that'll fall under their tribal umbrella, right? So now you got that and the registration comes with it. So with that, you can carry uh, you can carry your uh, your tribal driver's license, right? Right. right? But if you don't have all that in place and you riding around with a tribal driver's license, you better have your regular driver's license too, <laughs> and you better have insurance and registration because that means you don't understand the legal lawful processes and these sovereign citizens. Who kind of leak over into the indigenous movement? They're amongst the Moors. They like, man, just you can have any license that you want. Yeah. You're sovereign right. in your car. Put our plate on the back. Of it. Nah, bro, you about to get you about to get into a whole bunch of problems. Right. So there's an organized way for tribes to come as governments to a state to say we want to register all the vehicles of the people in our community. Right. And we're going to pay on this bond. They'll issue a plate. When they run the plate, the plate don't come come back right. to you. It comes back to the tribe. Because right. you're supposed to have some type of legal counsel that can interact with the state 
if they if y'all people start getting tickets, they're either gonna put that on the bond. Right. Additional uh, charges, but if you want to di- di- dispute those particular charges, you got to bring legal counsel to show these people did not violate the law. All right, all right. Let me bring in real thought because we're getting ready to close this thing down. Yeah, I'm I'm outside. So just tried to right. show you my little yeah. Indian collection. Did you see that, Doctor Ali? I no, see do it, it no. again. Do it again. All right, Wait Give me a second. I'm gonna turn the light on. You got an Indian collection? I've had it for years. Can you see it? Yeah, it's a dark, yeah. but I see it. I see the dolls. Yeah, Wait it's minute. dark back there, but we see it. Yeah, I've had it for years, even over yeah. here. Yeah. This wow. is on my back porch. But look at that. Freedom, your house is like a museum. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but see, I've had this for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm so I'm in the I'm who are you? You gotta show yourself. I don't see you. You want to speak? Show us who you are. All right, real thought. You got the floor. I appreciate you, all man. So uh, I seen the debate. I guess I just want to throw in my two cents for who won. Uh, I think it was close, but I think Jabari got it. Um, I would probably say Jabari two one. But then uh, I got a question for Ali. So because of what the question of the debate is, right? It's not like are we both? It's Are we Aboriginal Americans or are we Africans? And humanity evolved in Africa. So I just got a, you know, I got a question. Do you have any sources? Um, We're talking like 60,000 years ago that humanity evolved in in America and then left from there. Oh, say that again. Say that last thing again. I hear you. So if 60,000 years ago. Humanity evolved in Africa 60,000 to 200,000 years ago and then left. If you're saying that did not happen and it was in reverse, do you have anything that shows that humanity evolved in America? You see what I'm saying? 60,000 years ago or previous. Right, right, right. All right, so let me go back to a few points because some of the stuff I didn't even show. All right. I'm going to start back here. With the Perry, I'm going to go back to the Perry thing. And the reason why I keep going back to the Perry thing is this is important. I'm about to share my screen. Let me get to my screen so I can see that. All right. So let me go to mine. All right. Matter of fact, let me go back a little bit so I can show you the three people who were tested so you can um, see that I did my homework right. Right. John Clyde Perry was the uh, oldest person tested. When I show the S&Ps on the further right column, that's John Perry, all right? And that's his father. John Clyde was named after his uh, grandfather, Clyde Perry, all right? Then you had Cliff Clifton Anthony Norwood. Then you had Barton Lamont Perry, all right? But here, this is the death certificate of Clyde, who is the father of John Clyde Perry, right here, right? And this is Albert Perry name. Let me make this bigger. Albert Perry. All right. Name Albert Perry. Birthplace, Florida. I did that for a reason. Jabari showed a genetic uh, study that said Albert Perry was born in, in South Carolina. He wasn't. He moved to South Carolina later. And this is why I showed these. All right. Matter of fact, let me go here. South Carolina, by the time you do the 1880 census and the 1872, he's on that one too, you, you find him in South Carolina. How did he get to Florida, to South Carolina? Here you had Albert Perry right here in South Carolina, in Columbia, in my city. All right. So now let me go back to this, these variants. This is what I'm proposing. Um, the reason why I did a chain from all the way South America, ancient, 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 ancient to Yamasi is because the Yamasi were in South Carolina, Florida, and all these places. Now, they blend Yamasi and Seminole together because when the Yamasi, after the Yamasi War, went back into Florida, what you got out of Florida was the Seminoles. And so now, Florida becomes a state in the United States in 1845. 
Perry was born there in 1819. Perry was born in a place that was only Spanish land and Indian territory. That's important. So my point with a modern gene is, this is John Clyde Perry. These are the two younger. These are the snips. Let me make this bigger so y'all can see it, right? These are the snips right here. This is the snips from uh, Cameroon, the private variants. They're totally different. Now, in genetics, what I'm telling you is that difference does not uh, uh, come by way of uh, most likely. It does not come by way because because of a be of the antiquity of a. A is pre bottleneck DNA. That's important to 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 state, and it was found in America. So if 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 we have a, a variant amongst black populations that that are in America, then we have to ask that don't match anything match anything that's in Africa right now. What I am proposing is this. When we start dealing with antiquity, this is why I showed the most ancient calendars. And even though he kept uh, bombing on me about the ecostones, you can bomb on me all you want. The ecostones show plate tectonics prior to anything being known about plate tectonics. And they show a whole continent in the Pacific at a time now where we know that it's there, but it's underwater. This is why I keep mentioning pre bottleneck DNA. So, my point is that if we lived in these ancient antiquitous times that they say humans were not, and we're finding the evidence in the Americas, and we know that we had navigation skills, I didn't show that, but I have the compasses here from the Olmec times, etc. All I'm saying is at one point on this planet, there were only black people on this planet in the land masses that became the Americas and Africa. And so now what we have is people who are already here who have a contiguous uh, existence here. And then you have people who are uh, on Africa. Now here's the human evolution point where I digress. The human, human evolution teaches that from the early hominids, there are 20 of them, right? They all went extinct and that homo sapiens were a product of them. I don't agree with that. I think that Homo sapiens is the original progenitor and all of these extinct ones are Homo sapiens too, post bottleneck, who went through destructions. And when you look at their skulls, you see the microencephaly, you look at these are degenerate populations of people who just died off. And there were Homo sapiens in Africa who were able to survive and in America. And so now my thesis for saying that homo sapiens should be primary are the hair, the skin, and the microencephaly found in hominids. Now, when we look at those gene variants in, in homo sapiens that can be uh, become mutated, you can create microencephaly in human beings in various forms. And so this opens up a whole nother argument about whether human evolution got it right. Did we actually uh, progress from hominids into homo sapiens? Or, and this is my proposal, this is my thesis based on the facts, are dark-skinned, kinky-haired homo sapiens the progenitor and these hominids that went extinct are different pathological uh, uh, lineages of homo sapien who they are now grouping as uh, 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 various groups of these, these hominids are these just extinct variances of hominids? All right, Ali. Of homo sapiens. Of homo sapiens. And so All that's right. my point of contention. And this is why I got into genetics so I can work on this equation All right. over the next 10, 20 Brother years. Lott. It takes to figure it out. Brother Lai, you want to go? You got something to say? All right, we go to Chad. Last question, Brother Chad. Yeah, Sean, can you hear me? Bro, go ahead, La. I hear you. Hold up, chat. Yeah, ahead, I hear you, La. Peace, peace. Peace. The, the one, Brother Ali, peace. Peace, family. The one, the one question, well, first and foremost, I just want to say this, Ali, to you. I put all of my faith in you, brother. 
I thought you was going to knock him out the first round, but you let him a little sleep. You let him sleep on his feet a little bit too long. Okay. And the reason why I say you let him sleep on his feet a little too long is it. You gave too much credit to war scholarship, meaning you perceive everybody to somewhat be dumbed down and you wanted to stand the stands of being a professor and a teacher and walk everybody through all those different chambers. When you had to execute it, which was the DNA, you should have finished them right off on the first round. You're going in and out a little bit, bro. Just a little bit. I heard you say finish them out in the first round. What I was saying to you is this. You walked us through different chambers of knowledge and speaking to us about from the sarcophagus, things of that nature. When you had all the information that essentially could have fit the first round with the DNA, you didn't give it up that way. You walked us through through scholarship when it wasn't necessary. You should have just finished them right off the rip. And it would have ended this whole debate. Okay. That's how you saw the debate. Okay. Do you have a question or is that you just wanted to make that statement? The other question I have is this. When you and Jabari both were mentioned in the re for some of the sarcophagus in Egypt and some of the some of the <coughs> some of the kings with mentioning cocaine and tobacco. Can you guys hear me? It seems like I'm going in and out a lot. Yeah, you are going in and out. But I heard you say uh, some of the sarcophagus in Egypt that had uh, cocaine and tobacco. That's the last thing, last thing I heard. If he talking, y'all don't, don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me either, do y'all? Right, no, hear. I don't hear me either. All right, brother, lie, that's yeah. it. we got to move on. Chad, you got the floor. You might want to come back in. Maybe his reception would be better if he come back in. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Peace, peace. Great debate. Oh, y'all can hear me good? Yes. Bet. Um, great debate, man. Definitely worth the money. Uh, Dr. Ali, I can't even lie, man. Like, you you, you do your research. I, I definitely give you that. You know what I'm saying? You, you opened up a lot of eyes to new stuff. I'm going to still go with Jabari with the W. But I think Dr. Ali is probably the leading – the leading person when it comes to that that school of thought as far as indigeneity and stuff. So, I mean, Aboriginal or whatever. But, yeah, so I'll give you that. I just wanted to say that, brother. Thank you. Doing good. Uh, but I got two real quick ones in it. That's all I got for you. So, my, my first question is, um, so, like, ancestry information markers, like the, that select group of SNPs that they use to classify humans of today. The Human Genome Project did it. Why do you? Why do? Why do most African Americans today have majority West and Central African ancestral information markers? If there was, you know, another classification here prior to that. I mean, I know you bring up Albert Perry, but I'm saying like, why do most African Americans that do an ancestry test? Why does it come back mostly West and Central African? If we not that. All right. That's that's an easy question to answer. And it, it goes right back to the point that I, I'm talking about. We're going to have similar snips to people in Africa because we have because we do have a common ancestry. The question is this. This is a simple question and it's, it's a big question. If we had a whole population of people here in the Western Hemisphere for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years and possibly going back into antiquity, who also had the ability to interact with people on other continents, whether they we, whether you agree or not, whether you know they were here when they were moved, the continents were moving around or not. What you're going to what you're going to have is a homogeneous gene pool that exists before. How can I put this, man? I keep talking about the bottleneck, but I don't think y'all really getting this, the point that I'm trying to make. The SNPs in Africa in, in African specifically is going to match ours, bro. Like. If, even if we have people we have, who have been here for thousands of years, that just means we have common ancestors. The question is, were they were, were those common ancestors primarily in this part or that part or, you know, at that particular time, depending on what time period that we're dealing with pre bottleneck pre bottleneck is it, it simply means 
that you have a, a, uh, a Y chromosome lineage and a mitochondrial lineage that don't have as many mutations. So in pre-bottleneck, you're going to have a smaller amount of, of haplogroups, but they still, uh, in fact, the, the human population will have a higher diversity because they don't have the groups that have higher levels of mutations, meaning Europeans have less genetic diversity for a reason. It's all related to one atom in the body and the concentration of it. And it has to do with carbon. It affects the adenine and the guanine, which are the heavy carbon uh, nucleotides, which is why you find uh, African-Americans or Africans with the A's and G's all, all over the place when you're looking at the actual SNPs. And if I can, I, I, th this is the stuff that I do. Hold on. Man. Let me see if I can pull this up. God damn it. This, we got to deal with this. All right. So. I don't know if I can even do this. Can I share my screen? Let me see. All right. I need to share my screen to this. Let me show you what I, what we, what I use when I'm looking at these snips. Uh, shit. Where is this damn thing at? All right. Hold up. Let me make sure I get my point. NCBI. I think this will help what I'm about to show. All right, because this a lot of technical information, but this uh this will help. NCBI. Let me pull it up real quick. Give me a moment. All right, control NCBI, where you at? Nope. Nope. Hold on, y'all. Just give me a minute. I'll pull it up. All right, let me see if I can share my screen. Are y'all seeing my screen now? Not yet. There it is. Are you see the National Library of Medicine? Yep. Yeah. All right, so let me. Hold up. This says it's loading. Let me see if I can refresh this site real quick so it won't be loading. Ah, what did it do? All right, okay. So let me see if I can. Damn, it's it's spinning. I need to I need to be able to pull up the gene. What I'm about to show now is the S. Close out after this, Ali. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. All right, so this is the stuff that we use. This is one of the sites that you can look at. Uh, different uh, genes. Come on, man. This is spinning. Shit. Let me get to the SLC gene, and then I can. Talk about this in the context of even skin color and all of that shit. Damn. So these are the different polymorphisms, right? All right. So, yeah, these are the gene yeah. codes. And what you can do is you can look at the gene codes. And then once it starts to pull stuff up, you can look at the SNPs and stuff, too. I'm trying to find this shit now. Hold on. It's taking a long time to pull up because it pulls up the whole thing. But they're not doing it. When, they, when you click on this, it's a box that's supposed to open. And it shows you in, okay, so now, all right, so now, all right, this is one I can use. I can use this. This L SLC, uh, uh, this is solid, you call it 25. It's one close to this. But anyway, this is the gene that allegedly came from East Africa that mutated in Europeans to add to their light skinness. This is also the gene that the Khoisians have that describe their light skinness but the difference between the Khoisian having this gene and the european is the european also has a mutation on the mc1r gene so now when we're looking at these snips my point in bringing this up and i actually need to go to uh some other snips but shit fuck it, i'm not about to do that i think we should have another conversation i hope sanada invites me on and i can do this in an organized way when i when, the reason why we are matching West African SNPs is because of the length of our common ancestry. And so the question just begs, was that con that was that ancestry always on the African continent? Was it on the American continent? Or was it on one point at both pre-bottleneck before we had these changes that were going on? And so that's the question that I'm asking. And the reason why, damn, all right, hold on. The reason why this question has to be asked is because their, their evolution is a theory, right? But it's a good theory in, the, in one sense that it's attempting to use scientific facts to lace the theory together. 
that's the responsible thing that you do. But you can present other theories with the facts to chain them together, even if it's not uh, conventional. And this is what we are doing in my tribe right now. We are putting these other theses together with more data, not just saying, OK, we're going to avoid the whole North South Central American antiquity. We're just going to focus on Africa because we found these 20 hominids that humans had to progress from. You know what I mean? And so only the only reason I say that you get West African DNA because it's being labeled West African DNA. They could say West African variants and possible North uh, or, or, or North Central South American variants as well in, in these populations that are indigenous. They're not going to do that because they're never going to say we're indigenous. They keep saying people uh, who they say traveled over here are the first Americans. We're arguing against that. And so now if I had a, a genetic test to like get to the point where I find that common ancestor, ancestor and archaeogenetic testing, I could say you got these snips, then you have variants from people who possibly have antiquity in America and Africa. And we're still doing more study on the human evolution to come to a conclusion because we haven't come to a scientific conclusion. All right. And with that, Ali, peace, y'all. We out, man. Ali, we've been here all day, brother. <laughs> OK, so I mean, yeah, I'm done. I just I, you know, I'm doing my best to try to do it. a lot of, a lot of stuff. I'm going to find I think in the future, Sarnetta. We need to have some genetic conversations where we send out a curriculum beforehand yes. and start engaging these slowly because when you do the work slowly, what you're going to be able to do is raise the intelligence of the community so now they can start critiquing because this stuff is not as hard as you think is to learn. The yeah. math is hard, but, you know, the other stuff, you know, with sources, you could do those things. So thank right. you all brothers for giving me my question. Thank everybody for tuning in and um, we out of here. Brother Ali?